<laughs> yeah, okay. almost. Good. Other people? No? Somewhat introspection. Yeah, introspection. Yes. yes. Good. Yeah, and, and it, it was not meant to, by any means, give you homework, but I wanted you to see if you had anything that might be a little bit different in your mental processes or the ways that you're engaging with, with what you're doing. What about it at, as you were walking out of the room? What kind of thoughts or feelings came to mind? Maybe relief? No. Uh, maybe, I don't know if I should go back tomorrow. Uh, what, what were you feeling when you left the room yesterday? Invigorated. Invigorated. Oh, I like that word. Thank you. Mixed feelings. Mixed feelings. <laughs> okay. This work is pending, had to be done. Yes. This is what we learn. Somewhat improvement can be left, can be taken. Yeah. Plus, minus, plus, minus. Good. Yeah. For me, I, I missed yesterday's lecture and I was feeling about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Miss, like you missed out? Missed the opportunity? Yes, yes. I okay. Well, I don't want you to feel bad because you're here today and that's all that matters is you're with us today. I'm glad that you've joined us. I'm happy to be here. Today. Happy you missed? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy that I am with you, sir. Today. What, a, what a wonderful thing to say to your colleague. Mm, that's awesome. Yes. Good morning. He will join us today. Yeah. He's at the fair. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I am well. Nice to have you join us today. Thank you. We were just talking about what happened yesterday, and some of our colleagues are sharing in terms of things that we went through. And because we have a few people who weren't here yesterday, is there any wisdom that the group would like to share? with uh, some of the new people who are here today. Basically, I think it boils down to one thing. You should put yourself in the seat of a student and think from his perspective and then teach. Mm -hmm. Good. So empathy is very important. Yeah. So we talked about teacher identity yesterday, and that's one of the things that, that came away. Other advice or other thoughts that people wish to share? Try to be calm. Yeah. <laughs> be calm. Let's go. And yeah. He is Kamp? very hardworking guy. Yes. Medicine department. I see. The dialysis unit is taking. Okay. Care. Yeah. In the small animal clinic. Small okay. I had a tour of both the large and the small animal clinic yesterday, so I know kind of where the dialysis was. But when we got there in the afternoon, it had been shut. It was done. I, actually, I was on uh, leave yesterday. Oh, were you? Yeah. yeah so, okay. that's right. so that's why I was. Yeah. Okay. Actually, we went at 4.45. Yeah. And that time, I would think it's getting closed. You would have been done anyway. So you could have said, oh, I worked so hard all day. And then I, yeah. It's not like that. We are here to work hard. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I, I, again, I hope that what you found or that you were invigorated and not feeling guilty uh, but starting to think about yourself as a teacher in a different way and, and thinking about your students in a different way. And that was a, a really big uh, part of it. I, I sent this around through email. Hopefully you received this. Uh, and if you didn't, that's something you can do in your spare time. It's that article that we talked about in terms of, you know, are teachers naturally born or is it something you can work towards? And I, I do think it's something that you can work towards. This is the other article I referenced yesterday, and that is the developing, developing a professional studies curriculum. Oh, no, that's not it. That's, sorry, that's next week. <laughs> Never mind. Um, but today we are looking at assessment and evaluation. Please try to contain your enthusiasm. I know you're all very excited about this topic today. Uh, I certainly am. And what that means is, how are we going to figure out if the work that our students are doing is appropriate, is moving them towards what we want them to be as successful graduates and successful veterinarians? And if not, how can we adjust, expand, 
modify what we're doing to ensure that we are getting a true indication of what they're learning or where they're not learning and how we make that better. The context of assessment allows us to start with different kinds and then we're gonna work through that and then we are going to have an opportunity to practice. I'll refer to these beautiful documents throughout our day today and throughout the rest of the week. Do you know them? Have you studied them? Have you memorized them? I have. I know that's probably a, a sad thing. That is the Vishnaya yeah. Gazette we know. Yeah. So this is the what the Indian government says you need to do, right down to how many uh, x-ray machines you need and how many bottles of certain liquid and how many shovels and rakes. And it's amazing. The amount of detail in here is fabulous. These are kind of the minimum standards for the whole country. If you haven't read these lately, uh, I think it's from 2016. And I think the new ones are being put together. This year, this year it's going to be new. Okay, yes. good. So I found this really fascinating. The other aspect that we'll touch on throughout the day is these. So it's now, whoa, World Health Organization for Animals. See, I remembered, used to be OIE. These again are minimum requirements for certification for day one veterinarians. The American Veterinary Medicine Association is has another set of standards, right? So different accreditation. And I know that this is really important for the work that you're doing. I know that the AC, American, Medicine, AVMA, AVMA um, is also something that organizations aspire to in terms of accreditation. So if your students can meet those, that next level, then that allows them to go anywhere and do anything because of the, the way that they're held. These, these are kind of our guides, uh, but they, they are not the, the final authority. You are the final authority. You have to make sure you're meeting these, but when you are doing assessment and evaluation, you are able to add other things that you, as knowledgeable people in your discipline, feel should be a part of it. Okay. So, goals for today. Let's start with this. Here's your first assignment. I want you to read this paragraph and give it a mark out of 20. So I'm making you all teachers right now. Do people need a bit more time? No? All right, so the, what I've asked you to do is read that and grade it, give it a mark out of 20. Would someone like to share what they would give this for a grade and perhaps why? 
If it's written by undergraduate, and you can say it's A, postgraduate B, and doctoral student, it will be C. Okay. Because the sentence, in my opinion, okay. actually I am a mark giver. I give good grades. Okay. <laughs> Generally. Yeah. Generous. So you said depending on a the... lot of uh, uh, active and passive, I see in my opinion, they are there. There can be some words which can be abbreviated from some of the sentences. Mm -hmm. This is what I could make out because I'm not a grammar speaking teacher okay. of English origin. So you're, you're more focused on the content then? Yeah. Okay, good. So you would say... Like blood fat can be blood feed due to lack of genetic data available for most mosquito, whether... Uh, this represents a single mm -hmm. event in the evolutionary history of mosquito or multiple in the evolutionary history it's, it's, it has come most mosquito the of mosquitoes can be deleted or abbreviated from yeah somewhat okay. this much you can jump around okay. and i'm the same way i science wise it's, it's good. Okay. okay so I, so science wise it's good Absolutely. writing wise it may need some it may need yeah. some could have been better it has been science could have been better written than this Okay. Yeah. What did you give it for a mark? So I asked you for give it a mark out of twenty. And you I gave me was better. better say that is why I was able to answer it first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see importance of para story. <laughs> the para clinical. Did you give it a number? For numbering, like uh, if you want that uh, whether the hypothesis which uh, was generated was justified or not, <laughs> I'll say I can from reading. I can um, from the paragraphs. I can come to the conclusion that I understood what the yeah. writer want to say. Yes. But it could have been better written. Mm -hmm. But uh, numbering, if you say that on um, grammar, the numbering will be different. For, for the hypothesis, numbering will for be different. For ease of understanding, okay. you are saying? Yes. For, uh, for I, I didn't give you any criteria. I just yeah. said, <laughs> give it a mark and yeah. let's have a discussion about it. Yeah, so For the yeah. ease of understanding, yeah. I would give it maybe 10 out of okay. it. For and the ease of 20? Because it is okay. not very, not very understandable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that really depends if it is scientific, or maybe it is 18. Okay. From the scientific point of view, as he said. But from understanding, it is not okay. very clear. Okay. So maybe a 10 on writing 12 overall. That's what 11, you're saying? 12. 11 or 12. Okay. If, if, if uh, it's written for scientific purpose, mm -hmm. they must have supported with some of the references. Okay. Yeah. Usually you do that. Uh, if it is written by a PhD student or a faculty for um making some grant or something mm -hmm. then it's lacking for this uh, citations okay. from where these data be, because they are presenting some data and uh, for that some references are so this is meant for which audience actually well we'll get to that <laughs> you're always jumping ahead on me <laughs> i went here what what did you give it for a grade criteria should be mentioned sir this yes. uh, criteria of assessment okay is, uh, on the basis of uh, these criteria we should give the marks yes which i didn't do <laughs> because i wanted you to think about so if you if i did not give you that you had to create your own so what did you do after you created your own it's a scientific term I yes <clears throat> say that it is uh, above 15, means okay. 15 to 17. All right. But, oh, uh, so there's a range. <laughs> she didn't say 16. She said maybe 15, maybe 17. Okay, good. So from the scientific and then from the written perspective? Uh, 13, sir. Yeah. 12. Yeah, not as good. Okay. Other thoughts? Five. Five. Oh, I don't want to be in your class. Five out of 20. Five. <laughs> oh. That's how you get a reputation of being very. Uh, He's a man of bioinformatics. Yes. Okay. Why? Why five? Because that seems to be very low compared to. Just kind of anything out of it. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm fair enough. Maybe I, my English is not good. No, no. But I'm not understanding anything. What okay. the hypothesis was? What he said would have been better written. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have one point. Uh, Thank you. It yeah. seems bookish. It seems bookish. Yes, yes. not crispy. It doesn't seem not crispy, <laughs> and it doesn't seem reflective from uh, one's point of view. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that means if uh, 
uh, randomly we have to give, uh, be uh, right like this. Uh, none of us uh, will write like this. Yes. None of us. Yeah. And none of our student, neither graduate, neither postgraduate, neither PhD. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. So you can see that all of us would assess this differently. Mm -hmm. Many of us were thinking right away, well, what all you said was out of 20, including content and writing style. Well, is it weighted? Is it each part out of 20? Is it a final mark? How do you determine what is important? Is it about content? Sometimes when we write scientifically, all we want is to make sure the key terms are in there. There is no referencing. There's no, do you use APA? American Psychological APA Society. Okay. Yeah, so there's no, and I am, Mr. APA, I'm on a lot of grad committees just because I am very, I'm all about the Oxford comma and I'm all about good APA. Now it's seven formatting. Uh, so I would look at that and, and come to the same conclusions that many of you did. But what it shows is that when we do assessment, everybody can come up with a different way of looking at it if we don't have a criteria, if we don't have what we're specifically looking for. And that is so very important in the work that we do as instructors in terms of you know, being consistent. And if the student didn't know and they handed this in and they thought they had it nailed, they thought this was a 19 out of 20 because they included what they thought was important. That means that perhaps we didn't communicate to them what our expectations were. More crispiness. Need I love that word. <laughs> Sorry, yes. <laughs> Which doesn't mean, you know, maybe means something in this room, but may not mean. I'll tell you what this is. It is an abstract. Mm. So I went online and I found an abstract. So I was about to say. So that, so is this what is the audience? This is abstract, this. then no need of reference. Yes. Yeah. So these are graduate students mm. who have put together a reference, usually constrained by 200 words or 150. So They've tried to eliminate. It's they can like still be writing. more. Yeah, it's like press writing. Yeah, so it's not an example of the writing that we might expect from our students, unless we're having our students do an abstract for a conference or a presentation. Then, so when I say that, and you look at it, you go, "Oh, does that start to make more sense?" When I say that's an abstract, because mm -hmm. it gives you a bit more context and a bit more, yeah. But if it was written <laughs> uh, as an exam response, then definitely you may, you know, you would say, oh, I don't know if I like this. I don't, that one sentence that just keeps going and going with commas in it. I mean, that's, uh, that's an example of poor writing, something you might, but in an abstract, oftentimes all we're worried about is the word count, right? Mm -hmm. Keywords, word count, abstract. Now we have our paper. Okay. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate everyone's engagement in this. And, and again, it's, it's an idea a way to kind of get us thinking and focused on assessment and some of the issues that we will that we'll deal with. I think it's gonna work. I'm trying, where do I point? There we go, okay. So this is what we're going to focus on this morning. Uh, we're gonna look at the different kinds of assessment of, as, and for learning, and those may be terms that are new to you, and so we'll we'll unpack those. Uh, talk a bit about assessment and evaluation. People will often use those terms interchangeably, but they do not mean the same thing from a teaching perspective, so we'll take a, a quick look at that. Talk a bit about authentic assessment and some of the guiding principles that can help you, some of the information that you can use in terms of what may undermine or not undermine but underlie your approach to assessment and, and some of the foundational aspects and then i want you to tie this into your evaluation philosophy so yesterday we talked about our teaching philosophy we had some high level philosophers in the room and we were talking about you know making a contribution to society and how that impacts what you do in your classroom and why that's important now what we're going to do is think about well, how does assessment become part of my teaching philosophy later on in the morning? So not just yet, but that's something we're going to take a look at and, and hopefully build that in and start to add to what we did yesterday. Thank you, sir. Okay, let's start off right off the bat. So I want you, every time you go to a conference uh, and you're talking about your teaching and you're talking, you know, you're founding all this great stuff, 
And when you use the terminology, I want you to use it properly. So the idea of assessment, as it says there, the act of gathering information on an ongoing basis, understand individual needs and their learning. Assessment doesn't have to be a mark. Assessment is the activity that you engage with so that you are sharing ideas. So this morning, we tried to teach Jay some Punjabi and the assessment was, no, 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 we'll do this. We'll start over. We'll say people had to come and write it down for me and I think I got it. So the assessment part of that was just letting me know where I was doing okay and where I was failing miserably and I needed some assistance and you corrected and you used the different tools that would help me in terms of being better. That's the beauty of assessment. Assessment can be peer assessment like we did today. It can be ongoing. It can be for a specific area, but good assessment allows the learner to move forward and grow and understand where they are. Evaluation is a form of assessment, but it usually happens at the end. It's the part that none of us really like in teaching. It's when we look at the paragraph and go, five or we look at the paragraph and go mm, 15 to 17 you know or whatever right or 10 for part of it and 12 for part of it so the the actual evaluation is passing judgment and creating a letter grade for some of you who won't do numbers for me this morning uh no, 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 I'm I'm just, 18 16 yes uh, 14 i'm just I'm I'm here. Here. but but that is the part that we do usually at the end. It's the marking. It's the grading. Uh, maybe it's on an assignment or an essay or a practical if they're in clinical and they are performing a skill, uh, like some of the skills we saw students doing yesterday working on animals. Then they know at that point in time where they sit. So on that day when they wrote the exam and they got a good night's sleep and they had a big breakfast and they wrote it and they felt good and they got 90 that's what the evaluation is telling us. Now, the next day, they become a different person and things change and they learn and they forget information. So the idea of evaluation is it's often fixed, whereas assessment, you have that opportunity to grow, you have that opportunity to continue to move on, but the evaluation part is... So when you talk about, well, I am evaluating my students' work, that's not taking something in, giving them some comments and giving it back. That's assessment. And when you can speak like that, people will buy you, you know, free drinks. Oh, you're so smart here. You know the difference between, and they will like, you know, fawn at you and it's like, can I have your autograph and things like that? I joke, but it's really important to know the difference between the two because a lot of people just interchange them. They think that they are the same and they talk about assessment and evaluation as exactly the same thing. I am big, big, big on assessment. Evaluation, I do because I have to. Mm, yeah. I would much rather help my students learn and grow and give them some uh, assessment feedback or have a plan that allows them to work at something and get incrementally better as opposed to that's it, we've learned, now we have to move on to the next unit. The issue that we have in post-secondary is that we are required to evaluate. We are required to do standard exams, for example, so that we know where our students are, so that we can prove to our accreditation bodies, for example, that our students have met a particular standard. But we can do a whole lot of assessment and learning and feedback and development before we get to that point. And then when we do that evaluation, we can be comfortable with it. So that's three o'clock. Namaste. Where is the yes? No, no, I'm trying to go through as many languages as possible. It's nice to have you students back today. Uh, who's missing? One is missing. He's coming. He's coming. Is he? Okay. I thought maybe I'd scared him away and he didn't want to come back. <laughs> it was so mean yesterday. You can add ni hao. Ni hao. Ah, yes. How are you? That's the one I know because I've been to China a lot. Ni hao. Yeah. Okatsi. Yeah. Waalaikumsalam. Oh, ah, which English? Waalaikumsalam. That's Pakistan. Okay. 
السلام عليكم السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام يا زياد السلام عليكم اوكي ماي مسلم ريليجن اوكي اي ام this is turning into a big language uh, you can add vanakam also uh, welcome welcome welcome, welcome. 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 is in south india sit satriya kal namaste good morning it's nice to see you you have a great mustache <laughs> very good. you're going to be a very successful very successful veterinarian because you have a very nice mustache i think you have a great future ahead yes uh so we're talking about the difference between assessment and evaluation Did, how many people were familiar with the difference yeah, or, no, yeah a little bit no, no you see them as the same okay yeah so i hope that that's not a shocker and it's not meant to to be like you absolutely have to change the way you approach everything but it just allows you to have a, a better mental model for what's going on and when when you can talk about assessment then you can do all kinds of of great assessments with your students even just like wait let me show you now do it for me like that's an assessment it's really easy it doesn't mean that you're up till all oh, eight hours writing notes and stuff it's that ability to communicate in a timely manner and your students understand and then they can continue to move forward. so can we say yes. that assessment is qualitative evaluation is quantitative uh i think i I think that's probably a generalization that you can make and and be safe to make it. Oftentimes we are we will give written feedback with assessment or we could give someone a mark but we wouldn't record it. So there is the ability to use that but I think that that's that's clever on your part. If we need another kind of mental model to to make our way through it, we can say that a lot of assessment is qualitative or oral or verbal or hands-on. whereas evaluation is is oh, often very quantitative yeah quantitative being both numbers and numbers. letters but some form of grade what what type of and i apologize for my ignorance what type of grading system do you use uh, then ocpa ocpa earlier we used to have ogpa okay overall grade point average out of 4 okay four okay. Pages. yeah that makes sense no. that's like they do in the united states where they yeah. have 4 when i the same land grant pattern okay yeah just like ohio state university okay and now it's 10 No, it's ten. Okay. There's, they call them OCP, overall credit point average. Okay. So he's, he's telling the truth, students. Yeah. Okay. OCP. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm just checking. I don't doubt you for a second. Okay. okay good. Um. So, letter grades you don't use. No, we don't. No. Earlier we were using that. earlier. Yeah. yeah. In non-credit course. Yeah. Oh, okay. Eighty plus yeah. used to be a. and oh, 72 have a, a way of translating e and yeah. the schooling system that is still prevalent okay so in the k to 12 system they use yeah, still 12 yeah in okay. your country they have a plus also 90 plus maybe yeah. a plus oh i know all about the a plus a1 a1 a2 b1 b2 but kuch jagah aise yeah a plus so again many different systems so even when we when we separate assessment for evaluation when we go to evaluation we use letters do we use numbers one more tens fours what is our base unit for what we're doing and then if we have students who come from here and want to go to canada where we use we convert. numbers right and so i know that Only. working with graduates when i was graduate chair percentile to, based yes. system is also prevalent yeah. nowadays in competitive exams mm -hmm. competitive exams for entrance into these uh, professional, professional colleges, yeah. professional colleges. Yeah. like uh, engineering medical veterinarian mm -hmm. that is percentile based system they know it do you have do you have any pass fail courses yeah as you as satisfactory i'm satisfied yeah that's yeah. it yeah. and yeah. you either are on this side of the line or this side yeah. of the line yeah. and yeah yeah Some people say that pass fail is a good blend of the numbers both the qualitative and the quantitative because you never sure if you're done. You keep working harder and you get assessments and as the instructor you're like, ah, "I think you could keep going. Ah, I think you could do a little more. Ah, I think you could be better here." as opposed to when you do it with a lot of evaluation, you write the exam, you get your number, you move on and for a lot of students they just forget that information right or it isn't less uh forefront of their mind so lots of complicated ways of looking at assessment and evaluation and again it's not it shouldn't be a surprise to you because i know you do all this all right so 
let's focus on assessment for right now. And I apologize if some of this stuff gets confusing. When is tea break? In half an hour. Are we good? I don't want to lose track of time because you know me. I get yes. Fifteen minutes. <laughs> right now. <laughs> were you at the door? You were listening, <laughs> and I said, "Oh, he was listening. He listened to the tumbling of." Oh yes. <laughs> I thought it's half an hour. Pretty early. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know me. Oh. It might be twice. What perfect timing to have a break. <laughs> From India, I would say, yes, you take Darjeeling. There's a place in Assam, the okay. province of India, Assam, yep. and there's a place, Darjeeling. I, I'm familiar with the yeah, name. Yeah, Darjeeling long leaf tea. That's the best. Okay. And what is this? Uh, I just uh, maybe see. This is, so hardly, maybe. this is the stuff that the university buys for. And it's not so good. It's, it's, it's good, good, but it's not as good. That is not dip dip. That is, uh, you have to boil I make it yeah. yourself. Do I say gesundheit when you sneeze? Yeah. Do I say bless you? Do I say gesundheit? Bless you? Yeah. Uh, but nobody's. Jesus, is bless you. You were sneezing, right? I'm sorry. Yeah. So in my class, when somebody sneezes, bless I always you. say bless you or yeah. gesundheit yeah. or. But I'm never sure if that's that yeah, the person who is sneezing. He says sorry. Oh, okay, <laughs> I I do that as well. But I'm Canadian, so I'm supposed to say sorry for everything that I do. It's always my fault, and I somehow I'm implicated in it. Okay, well I can I have my laptop here, so we'll just keep going if that's all right. Yes. Keep charging on. Oh, it will come. It's on. Oh, it's on. Gen the generator has started. The electricity generator. So soon it will be back. Okay. So we have the three three types of assessment. We have assessment of learning, as learning, and for learning. And again, each of those have a different focus in terms of how you can apply them. Probably the most uh, common one is the assessment of learning. And what that is is very much like evaluation. So this is where you have to just trust me and we're gonna get through it because it gets a little bit confusing. So when I say assessment of learning, it means I am, I have completed my instruction. My students have had the opportunity to work through a particular set of activities. Maybe they have created a product, a written product. They have done a presentation of some kind. They have. Done, a, done some group work. Uh, and then what I'm doing is something is taking or not. I am trying to determine, yes, have they met the standard? Is it where I would like it to be? Often it is towards the end of teaching. So I wouldn't do assessment of learning right away. In the end. Because people are still trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm hoping that they grow through the process, but it may be near that final aspect, the evaluation aspect, and I might give them some feedback. So asking your students to demonstrate in advance a particular technique. So maybe a surgical technique, or maybe that's something that has to do with handling an animal in a particular way, that air and, and uh, support of them before you even begin another process. So that I'm comfortable where they're at to apply evaluation to them. So again, a lot of that is that assessment of learning. And you can go on to the next slide. Yeah, because I think I'm talking about it right now. Here's another important word. So you, you'll be able to impress your friends and family with your notion of assessment and evaluation and the difference. This is often referred to as summative assessment. And what that means is it's usually a collection of many things that you are looking at towards the end of a learning process. So summative. The next kind, if you want to go to the next slide, is assessment for learning. This is probably the truest form of assessment if we're looking at the three kinds. It gives people the opportunity to determine where they are. So your learners may be on a particular path or journey, but they're not quite there yet. So how do you get them to that next step? Or 
The, the way to remember that is if you think of it as formative assessment. So summative is the assessment of learning, formative or substantive for learning is formative. So there's, there's another dichotomy there. Evaluation, assessment, formative, summative. Stick with me. Trust me, we'll get through this, but it, it's something that I work, I work through all the time with people. This is the one that as, a, as an instructor, you can have a plan for formative assessment or assessment for learning. And you can determine where people are as individuals. And it's a lot of extra work, but what it means is some people are just, they get it right away. So maybe it's really complex theory. Maybe they have a particular, particularly um, well-defined set of fine motor skills. So if you're asking them to do a, a technique and they just get it right away and you think, oh, I'm the best teacher in the world. This student has just come in and they've been able to pick it up right away. And then you go work to the next student and they are struggling and they're not doing as well. So for that first student, your formative as assessment might be to move them on to the next item or the next thing that they learn. For that second student, it may be, you need more practice. Can I spend some more time with you in the lab? Can you rewrite this because it's clear to me that you don't understand it? I haven't given them a number or a letter or a grade or anything, but I've given them that important information that allows them to think differently, to recognize where maybe there's some deficits or maybe there's some opportunity to learn. And then they're like, oh, okay. And it really dependent on the individual a lot of times. Does this sound familiar? Does this, is this something that people do? Does anyone want to share about how they might do assessment for learning in their practice? Well, then we have taught, and then we go to say clinics, and then we yeah. say whether they're really applying their knowledge. If they know it, they will apply it. If they don't know, it means uh, they don't, uh, if, they, if they are not applying, it means they don't know. Okay. It means uh, there was some, uh, something lagging on our part. There okay. are something like on their part yeah. that they could not understand and could not apply that. So what would you do? I would go to clinics. So you would go back yeah, to, I would, to reteach that? For them? Uh, I, what would you do? Right there, I would just uh, give them a few hints so that they can remember something. Okay. Good example. Other people? Is that... Okay, students, I'm going to ask you a question right away, so be ready. Okay. Other people? Do you, do you do a similar thing where you're like, okay, stop. I need to, that's something that you do to make sure that you see them wildly off track or missing in terms of their understanding. And sometimes in practical, also in the Viva, people ask about theory questions mm -hmm. in the end of the course. Mm -hmm. So that is also a sort of way of theoretically assessing that whether they have knowledge. But practically, I would say the most important part is to be clinically relevant and to come to know whether they really have got that clinical aspect mm -hmm. in their knowledge yeah. set. But how do we build them to that point? Yeah. Or in a form yeah. next form class. Way. Pardon me? For taking the next class, okay. Just to discuss the previous class pointers. It reads five minutes. Okay. With them. Yeah, always yeah. again it gets stuck in yeah. mind. Yeah. So, re so rewind. One neck might have five correct. Rewind about give them five minutes. The two major characters, okay, which you need as a clinician or as a diagnostician. Okay, good. This is how you can do. It. So sometimes, right. yeah. Okay. So normally, the naturally that they move from here to clinics, especially if. They require our subject in search. Mm -hmm. So they just come back to us for one and they do a wise set or a wise set. I think in our system, there is a moment that is in the even code that they might kind of affect. Mm -hmm. No, they have started going to clinics. Mm -hmm. The paraclinical people, they have been assigned duties in the clinic. They have been assigned for doing a basic department. Pre clinical, not assigned. Paraclinical assigned. So what I'm hearing is, you refocus the students on what's important. 
Yeah, and no so you problem. give them those key things, you remind them before they move on to the next stage. And there may be supports there, or there may not, depending on how it's set up. But that's part of that formative. And then we have assessment. to look at our own teaching style from different angles, whether did, uh, I did teach from rightly or I was wrong, I should have taught in a better manner. That also gives us feedback about our style. Philosophy. <laughs> yes. That fits into your philosophy. Absolutely. Okay, students, you ready? I'll give you a heads up. Do you like to do schoolwork and get a grade? Or would you prefer to have your professors talk you through things and give you suggestions and practice again? What do you prefer? Teacup girl. I didn't learn your name yesterday. You were even so kind enough to come and see me. You just said yes, but you were like, it's very quiet. Do you prefer the, the, the first way or the second way? Okay. And do you want to say why, or do you have an idea why that you prefer that? I think practically I win more or less. Yeah. So practically it's more helpful to you. And not a surprise when you think about the profession that you have chosen and how practical it is. There is certainly, it's not a theoretical, but so much of what you do is practical. Thank you for sharing. Any other students have a preference? So I yes, think, sir. I think interaction with the teachers provide us better knowledge rather than creating on our own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a good, there's a better relationship that's built. There's a transfer of information, and it's specific to what you need. Yeah. That's really great. It takes a lot of time, but if you are passionate about making your students better or improving your own practice, those, those meetings with students are invaluable. You know, 95, 105, it's hard to have those one-on-one, -on -one, right? Like in your class this morning, you probably didn't have a whole lot of time to sit down with an individual and give them feedback. But in some situations, it, it is not just easier, but necessary to ensure that you are making corrections and that whole notion of formative assessment or assessment for learning is really, really helpful. I, I find it as a teacher very much the, the way I would like to do all of the work, but I know it's also often not practical. Can we go to the next slide then, please, sir? Okay. This is the one that may be different. <laughs> assessment as learning. And I'll just give you a chance to read that. self -assess. This is a This is a form of assessment that is starting to find its way more and more into the work that we do. And the earlier we start with our learners and our students to think about themselves as having control and being able to recognize what they know and they don't know the sooner they're going to be able to, to have that ability to take ownership of their learning and be more interested in what's going on. So that also allows us, if we are providing choice in assessment for, for a learner, for a student to say, I do best, I show my skills and my understanding this way best. I am a tremendous writer, not me, uh, but may, I'm playing the role of the student. I would prefer to be able to share with you in an essay form what you need to know for me so that I can indicate my learning and what I have done. Someone might prefer to do a presentation. Other people might need to find it uh, works better for hands-on. Again, this is creating maybe more work for you in the beginning, but once students are confident in their own abilities, they can, as you said, self-assess. So you might share with them the criteria, the learning outcomes, and they are able to look at it and, and go, okay, I think this is where I'm deficient. I need to take myself back through this information. I need to spend more time in the lab. I need to practice and work on this because I don't feel that I'm meeting the standard. Now that's in conjunction with the feedback that you would give and the, the feedback that uh, you would ultimately have to submit to somebody else about the student. 
But you can see how those three things come together to, to create a very comprehensive way of understanding. This one is the most difficult. It's kind of the highest order, the highest level of assessment. But when students understand, it allows them to start to make that jump to being the professional that you hope them to be. And in, and in this particular setting, that's what you're doing. You are training the next generation, the professionals, so that when they are in practice, when you wonderful people are in practice, you can say, now that was okay, but next time I meet with that particular farmer, client, whoever, I think I might do something differently. I might provide them with some more information. I might ask them some different questions. So that's that long lasting impact of using assessment as learning because it is such an important developmental component, but it's hard to do. And we are, you know, we get paid to hold on to knowledge and sometimes it's difficult to just hand it over to students, right? We do it, you know, with great fear and trepidation. We're like, oh. but sometimes we have to do that. And those small stakes or those, those low risk opportunities to hand over the learning to students allows them to build and allows us to be comfortable with their understanding. And then when we meet with them with the other type of assessment, then they can say, oh yeah, I already knew that. This is what I need from you to do more formative work, my assessment for learning. Or I think I know enough now that I'm ready to do that summative work. I'm ready to show you my final skill set, and then you can evaluate me when all is said and done. <clears throat> Pretty Pretty complex weave, but you're all nodding. I think you're with me. So is, is there anything I need to clarify? Yes. And do we have to take care of the group of students or number of the students in this case? Suppose the students are 100. Yes. Can we do as? You, would, you might do a little, you might do a little bit of as. Uh, yes, that's the thing. Sir. Yes. Because ultimately what happens, what ultimately percolates down when you put it to the writing, it will all be five. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Out of six. Yeah. This is my view. Yes. So how can we be some if the population is small, like six fellows are there, you are directly meeting yes. one to one interaction. Now they will be afraid of at least giving you the true assessment. They will not be uh, afraid of giving you the true assessment. But once you are shielded, is you understanding what I'm saying? These 100 students are there. Yeah. The problem comes that everybody will write six or five out of six. Yes. So whether he or she is fulfilling well doing. Mm -hmm. So is it the maturity level or is it the experience which should be added or is it something else which should also be incorporated into it or the number of the students? Suppose six students are applying for a single post. Mm -hmm. Suppose. Yeah. There they will tell the true assessment. They will tell the how am I capable, what I have learned. Mm -hmm. and that you like resume you create, create. But in the class of undergraduates, like if we target undergraduates, can we really use as if you use it early on and you invest in the time and energy to make, to help them understand, not make them, you can't make anyone doing it, but to help them understand and give them small opportunities, then I feel that you can grow it as you move towards the end of the program. But to, but to do that right away, no, I don't think it's possible. And, and in some of the work that we are doing Back in Canada, we are trying to start little children, like in grade three and four, uh, with understanding assessment. So we're actually sharing with them what they're supposed to be learning. And it takes a long time. By the time they get into high school, they have a better understanding. So it's that same idea. You, you wouldn't start right away by, by saying, ah, oh, just do your own assessment. Let me know how it's going. I'll be up at the front drinking tea. No, you have to talk about it why it's important, and there are a lot of underlying concepts that, that really have to be understood by the students. Uh, one of the other things you mentioned is that is the idea of working in groups. Uh, so it's if you are assigning a group yes. mark, then you have another layer, right? Yes. How do you understand what all the contributions are? Sometimes assessment as learning allows that peer feedback to happen within a group project so that you're only giving, you know, marks to a certain extent, and then the group gives the rest of it. But again, that's, that's the, the next level of granularity that we're looking at when it comes to 
assessment and evaluation. It's, it is a very complex thing. That's why we're going to spend a whole day on it. And you may never want to talk about it again after today. You're like, oh, Jay, he just took all the joy out of assessment and evaluation for me. I don't, but, I, but I'm hoping that's not the case, that, that we get through some of these very difficult decisions because <clears throat> you're the one who has to decide yes. Yes, as an instructor. Yeah. Is it in practice at your place? What's that? Please. If we're starting to grow it. So I would say if you're look if your class is a hundred percent, you might do uh, assessment for learning maybe 60%. You might do uh, assessment of learning 30%, assessment as learning, maybe 10%, maybe five maybe 3%. So you might slide, you know, your, your formative or your assessment for learning should always be the largest chunk if possible. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other two are much smaller. And this one is, as you get to learn and understand it, it's going to be a small part of the assessment that you're doing. But, but I think it's important to know about it. And it's important to try. And there may be things that you know, because you are knowledgeable about your students and your content and the particular setting to say, this is where it would work. I think I'm going to do it here. And this is where it won't work. And I will never do it here. And that's, again, that's the expertise that you have developed. I think self question uh, self-assessment system is there in the bachelor's program yeah. in the form of a tutorial group. Okay. Where 10 students are, uh, you can say have one advisor. So like, let us say that I have been given the responsibility of 10 students. Mm -hmm. so I, uh, the parasitological problem, I will can discuss with them. The other ones, like I don't know how many fossa and phobia are present in this, column, but it can give some idea. Mm -hmm. So it's there, but if you are thirsty, you have to pick that glass up. Mm -hmm. The glass will never come yeah. to you. So that uh, tutorial group is the most uh, undermined or underestimated the students are never coming mm -hmm. so when they come they can self-assess yeah. this is how because i told you yesterday i studied uh, did my graduation from there you know but tutorial group uh, my advisor was uh, the registrar dr hs banga so we'll meet him on wednesday we'll tell him some problems he will give some guidance and uh, you can mm -hmm. uh, take some positives from there it's there but it is underutilized and but you were bringing you understood what you needed to bring to that environment. I know you simply what, uh, as an undergraduate, what this uh, student must see that what is his priority is to get passing marks or he wants to gain something. Mm. That's another thing. Passing, everybody can pass. Okay. Maybe, maybe not in five and a half year, in six and a half year, seven and a half year, eight and a half year. So this is what differentiate the veterinary doctor from veterinary officer. Mm -hmm. So yeah. This is the difference. So can you, you the, can't do it in eight and a half? Don't you have to have it finished? You get two extensions. No, when we were studying, you can do it in ten years also. There oh, were okay. seniors who were ten years spread it out older to us, and they did okay. the must BBSC with us. That's why we said education is the system is there, but it is really dark. Yeah, it is so quite cheap in India, so you can keep on continuing. Yeah. So how oh, it's not so cheap. <laughs> but still, it, as compared to your country, yeah. it's damn cheap. Don't but, uh, know the present rate uh, of the university. Present rate now? It's it's going up. Actually, yes. is, uh, the cost of degree yeah. is the highest in uh, Ludhiana. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, throughout the India, and and it's all relative. So it it may be cheap compared to North America. And paying the best of Punjab is the lowest among the India. Yeah. As compared to North America, it is yeah. 10 times, I mean, 20 times. Teacher has a great pay bill, yeah, sir. Teacher, teacher. Teacher, teacher, teacher. Costly, yeah. Next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Self-assessment. <laughs> so when, it, when we ask students what they want, so we're, we are speculating as a group of learned academics, um, and we are in a very privileged position. But when we talk to students, we need to, again, keep in mind what they want. And when it comes to assessment, these are some of the things that are really important for students. So students, I may ask you a question right away. There's your warning. All right. <laughs> so the idea of, of assessment being fair, given what was taught. 
there's nothing worse than getting uh, assessed on something that you knew nothing about. Remember those exams where you would write an exam and then you would sit down and you'd look at the paper and you would say, we didn't talk about this. We didn't teach. Have you, has anyone else had that experience? No, just me. Surprise questions. Very common. No, very common. Okay, good. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Um, fair given the effort and understanding. So sometimes people are working really hard. Sometimes people aren't working hard at all. And should that be reflected in the kind of assessment? The last one I think is, is the most important part is that the idea of feedback in assessment. <clears throat> so if you are sharing your thoughts with your students, does this make sense to them? Do they go, okay, I believe that what we have done, yeah, that's good. And I thank you for taking the time to write something that helps me understand where I am. Again, in all forms of assessment, that communication of where you are and where you could be or where you're lacking is so very important with your students. The last thing is, and it goes back to maybe something that you were alluding to, don't assess if, it's, if there's no reason to do it, if it's tradition. Why do we ask people to submit? Well, we just always have. Does that help them learn? Well, no, not really. Do you need to take the time to go through it if this is not useful information? Well, no, I don't really have the time to do this. I'd rather be working with them. So reflect on the assessments that you do. And if they're not moving your students towards that end goal, if it's just so that you can do it, put a check mark beside something, then maybe that is, is not a, a good example of assessment in action. Okay, students, are you ready? Do you, do you think that those first three bullets are correct? Do you agree with? Go ahead, you want to talk? Do you agree? Sir, um, all the three points are valid. Yeah. Uh, like feedback and comments, um, it should be there. Like uh, teachers also should take feedback from students. Okay. Brilliant. See, that's why we have students here today. That was absolutely brilliant. So not only you giving your students feedback, but I didn't understand what we were supposed to do. How many times would it be great to hear that from your students so they can go, oh, okay, wait a minute. I didn't teach this properly. I didn't provide them with that feedback that they needed at the time they needed it to move them forward. So that notion of feedback going both directions. I don't have like, I need like a, a sticker or a smiley face or something and I would put it on you today because that is a, that's a brilliant insight. I really appreciate the way that you've shared that. Because often assessment is just a one-way flow, but we have to think about receiving and giving. And if we're not in that kind of mindset, then we are missing half of what we could be doing. Thank you. Uh, okay, next, please. Ah. Things to keep in mind about assessment. Bodas. What's that? Bodas. Oh. Bodas. 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 Bonus. Bonus. Last line. Didn't I talk about that already? <laughs> the idea of doing something that it's actually useful and it's not just something that you're doing for the sake of making a check mark. That's what I meant. So I apologize if I wasn't clear, but yeah, I thought I went through that. Yeah. Yep. Bonus means just check marks. Oh, no, a bonus is a positive. Okay. So what that means is that in a, in a great class, like the ones you teach, your assessment is valuable to the students. When you give them feedback, they go, oh, thank you. That was wonderful. I understand. I am excited about doing more of this work. As opposed to, did you hand in the paper? Yes. Did you read it? No. Check. Move on to the next thing. There's no value in that at all. But if there's the opportunity to, to provide them with feedback, then that's the bonus part. That's the, that's the good part. Thank you for asking for clarification. I was not. Yes. No, that's all right. A few other things to keep in mind in terms of assessment. 
Valid and reliable. Okay, who are the scientists here? Who wants to talk about validity and reliability? What does that mean? I just turned this into a research methods course. So what does validity mean? Anybody have an idea how you would define validity? So in terms of assessment, if I say my assessment is valid, it measures what it is intended to measure. So I can be confident that if I am doing an assessment, if I'm asking a student to demonstrate something, the system that I have in place that allows them to demonstrate or the question that I ask them to respond to in their writing will give them the opportunity to show me that they understand and that we are making our way through the important or the correct information. So that's the validity part. That when I look at an answer, I go, okay, that tells me that this particular learning process that they have gone through and what they have shared as a result of that, I am confident. So then it's going to connect to this. So they know the anatomy, boobless, boobless anatomy, all right? Mm -hmm. They are able to show me that. And the way I've done that, how, how would you do an anatomy of a buffalo? What assessment might you do? Oh, yeah. and, you, and you can just make something up if you want. But you're, you're like boobless, boobless to me. Like you're the buffalo man. So that's why I'm coming back to you. <laughs> How, how would you know that they would be able to identify the anatomy of a buffalo, for example? I think as a veterinarian, they should at least know the minimum uh, anatomy required for a surgical procedure. Okay. Basic surgical procedure. Applied. 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 Okay. Because veterinary science is so huge. Yeah. So huge. You cannot go into details of everything. Okay. In medical practice, you've got one species. Here we have got maybe seven. Okay. So at least, as he said, they should know those things. Okay. But you cannot know everything. Nobody can. So you might give them a handout with the outline of the animal on it, and they would identify all the parts. And you would go, okay, in my mind, they know where the front is, the back is, the top is, and the bottom. Okay, so that's a valid assessment. And I would know that every time I use that assessment, that it would tell me what I need to know. And I didn't mean to put you on the spot. So I thank you for your colleague rushed to your aid right there. That's a valid assessment because those are the actual parts of the anatomy that they would need to know. Now, reliability is that every time I use that, I would be confident that it's going gonna, it's gonna to be okay. I can use it again and again and again. And if my students are giving me feedback and saying, thank you for this, I appreciate the ability to demonstrate my knowledge, and all the students say the same thing over and over again, that's that reliability. So I don't have to think twice about this. I have this assessment. It's great. I'm going to use it forever because tells me what I want my students to be able to demonstrate, and it's consistent every single time. That is sometimes very hard to do in our assessment. I think yesterday I may have talked about uh, final exams. I, I do more project-based work now, but I used to give lots of final exams for my classes. And I can remember the one time sitting at the front, all the students, of course, are just like, writing away. And it was the one time that I didn't have students come up to me and say, what do you mean by this question? I don't understand. What do you mean by this? And then I'd have to be like, okay, listen, put your pens down. For question 2B, this is what I really meant. Oh, okay. And then they would go through it. And But the one time that I finally got to that point where they weren't asking questions about the exam, I knew that it was valid and reliable because it wasn't confusing. It was something that allowed them to demonstrate 
their knowledge. They weren't giving me feedback that it made no sense on some of the questions. Any of you experienced that? In exam, everybody experiences it. Yeah. Particularly, we have external examination. Yes. Examine, uh, paper, question paper will be from uh, some other university. So that's why we... Yeah. Um, a might be very much important for you, but not for me. Yeah. So we have to give them a quantum of uh, lecture or notes so that they so you, can do well in the external exam. So you're preparing them for that assessment, it for that, in, that evaluation. It started yeah. uh, when we were studying. Yeah. Previously, there was internal system. The, uh, they will teach some portion, they will take the paper. Uh, but book, books learning and something like that, because Paper can come from Chennai, it can come from Haryana, it can come from Jammu and Kashmir, and every teacher has his for her own mindset. <laughs> so you have to give them some extra. So is that a good form of assessment? Having external well, examiners can, come in? In undergraduates, it's excellent. Yeah. It gives the student the habit of book reading. Okay. Because ours was the first uh, experimental batch here. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Book reading is there. At least you come to know some books are existing in this profession. That also creates a fear in the mind of mm. <laughs> they will read. <laughs> this is necessary. Is he, is he right? Yeah. You're afraid? Okay, they're all smiling. They agree. They're nodding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, they will enter the university. They can have the notes of five years uh, <laughs> from uh, gate number three shop. <laughs> 3500 rupees <laughs> but we out smartly changed the oh uh, yes yes academic integrity yeah yes, it that's good well fear is a great motivator right yes. but is it is it helpful if you are the ones that are providing the formative or the assessment for learning and then someone else comes in with a completely different perspective I mean, you are helping them to go to, you know, to this direction, and then someone comes in and it's just slightly off in another direction. We talk about the, the fairness of that. That assessment is not totally out of track. That yeah. is uh, mainly with, from the things uh, what we have to do. Mm, okay. 60, 80 percent, like, it will be same. Yeah. Okay. Even more. 20 percent uh, or 10 percent, it can be different. Okay. But the standards of institutes are different. Yeah. Mm. Ours, very good institutes say. Other the exam examiner external examiner may be from a very low, so he may be asking some irrelevant things. So that's also a problem yeah. because the syllabus is so huge, people get lost. So that's why paper gets vetted. Uh, yeah, internal paper. Yes. COE controller examination will. But the standards it. are different. That's not the other thing. Mm. The reason, and I appreciate this discussion. If you look at the the bottom point, there is is the what's being assessed, identified in the, in the plan for instruction. So you might have it in your plan, but the other person, like you say, may come from a university where it's not part of their plan. And, that, and that's just chances. Chances. Yeah. remote chances. Remote. Very but many times good. they ask theoretical questions, which are making little sense in clinical practice. So the slaves is so huge. If you focus on that, uh, how can the, I mean, only 20% may be clinically relevant. So they focus on maybe the remaining 80% because they're, our institute, like you see, many people, professors going abroad, so they know what is the current scenario, but others are laid back, sort of. So mm -hmm. they just ask, keep on asking questions from 80s or 90s, so which are no longer relevant. Questions are no lesser. Huh? The aim of the university is to prepare the graduate that can serve their motherland. Yeah, but there is, I can tell you 10 drugs which are not uh, uh, you know, used in India, yet they are there in syllabus. That's we say syllabus. They are, means uh, when we are teaching the parasites, we are saying that it's phenothiazine, haloxone, albendazole, fenbendazole. So as a teacher, you tell the student that these were used but then that times. Yeah. And now these are the newer drugs. But the external examiner, he asked methoxyfluorine. That is not and you at all. You can remove <laughs> him. You can remove him. Your think, uh, yeah. It's in your yes. hand. Unless you practice, you don't, can't know what is really to be taught. Diversity, sir. Uh, but you can university. Otherwise, all will be a vibha. No, <laughs> I mean there is so much theory and useless also. So if okay, good word, mm -hmm. useless. <laughs> yeah, many things are useless. I can think. No, but it ties right. into the huh? the title for this right. next one is useful. Is useful. Well, so, we teach chloroform, we teach chloral hydrate, methoxyfluorine. Nobody uses. Hey, Doctor Anand, he's surgeon. 
Do you have you ever used? But one thing, one thing that's all like uh, at least then no. If we are using isoflurane, why you shift it from thrombus? Yeah, isoflurane? that you should know. You should know. Yeah. At least you should know the previous why yeah. the disadvantage. That's why. And why we shift it to new? Then you keep uh, the importance in the assessment yeah. in the exam according to in your hand point. Uh, uh, no, according, this is good. I point just even. I mean, yeah. they should give importance in the exam accordingly. Accordingly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Accordingly. No, if out of 100 questions, one or two questions Probably from there from outside, it's perfect. Things are changing. Things are changing. It's the time for things to change. Yeah. Probably, I know things are changing. Mm. The well, students are like, uh, they are very curious. Mm. Whenever I, I, I take a lecture, they always like, they don't, don't ask in the class. They always come like in my class, in my campus. And they ask very good questions. Mm -hmm. Because they read uh, the books. They have started reading the books. And yeah. uh, they are and it's only because of it's ninety percent. They may or may not go, but they prepare for the uh, for the uh, foreign uh, like national exams. Exams. Yeah. So I think this is a very good trend. Things are changing. And, right? and we are improving from uh, their suggestions as well. When we were studying, there were seven people from the medicine who taught us. Everybody gave his own paper. Oh. Seven papers. Three hours time. Now they are shifted to one paper. So what is this? This is advancement. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, and we will say that, oh, this paper is there. Am I having this paper or that paper? That paper is not there. So it's there because of external examinations. It's there. That really depends on subject also. Subject like pharmacology, it is so huge. If I want, nobody will pass. If I want from the same syllabus, nobody. But every can. subject is. It is oh. very huge. It is every very subject. Huge. Part people. No, no, no. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I should be teaching them relevant things. Yeah. Because it is so huge syllabus. Opposite to him, uh, we are dealing only. Like one. surgery, gynae, medicine. Yeah. yeah. One system limited. Yes. But uh, we have to teach them penicillin rather than shifting towards the amygdala. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. Next slide. Okay. So what? <laughs> I I will just I will just kind of bring that the most recent discussion back into context is that you all have unique perspectives, you're passionate about it, and you care to do what's best for the students. So when we do come across these ideas, I think the best thing to do is to have these discussions so that we understand each other. We don't always have to agree with how it would be, but if there is a change in what's going on, and we talk about changing our programs for the better, we're changing assessment for the better, and it's the same idea with our course content. Put it into a... Uh, a way that students understand it, they understand why the changes are made, and if there's a need to assess them on it, fine. But that might be something where it is just information they need to know, and it's it's a bonus or not a bonus in the class, and then you move on to the the, the newer information and how it's applied. But I think if we're going back to the, the idea of what makes assessment really successful, timeliness. So if, if you are doing something and a student is going through a particular learning process, you need to give them feedback right away. That's the, the toughest part. And you may say, oh, but I have all of this stuff that I want to share with them. And it takes me a long time to give them feedback. My suggestion is you're better off to rather than give them feedback on 10 things in a month, give them feedback on three things in two days. <laughs> Then they're able to use it right away. It makes sense. If you wait a month, then they're like, oh, what? I don't even remember what we did. Mm -hmm. And you may need them to really master a particular skill so that they can progress. And it's the toughest part of teaching is the feedback <clears throat> and being timely. Even if you get them really good feedback and it's so far past that learning experience, they don't have the ability to tie it into what they have just done. They have moved on. They're mentally, they have moved on, or physically, they have moved on, and skill wise. So, that timeliness that's why it's the first one at the top there because you want people to be able to grow. Right. And it's, it's like if you put your hand on the stove, ow, right? Very timely. I learned. I'm not going to put my hand on the stove again. I'm just going to leave my hand on the stove for 15 minutes and see what happens, right? That feedback. Their hand will be crispy uh, by then because it's on the stove and it doesn't help them learn. That quick 
feedback timely, then they know, then they don't know what not to do, then they can build on that and move forward. The quality of the feedback, again, rather than give a lot of that is good, that is fine, like that is, there is no value in using that kind of terminology. Be specific in what you're saying. If you were quicker, if your incisions were longer, if your paper had APA formatting as opposed to just rep, that is quality feedback. And students can say, I know exactly where I need to make the change. I need to include my reference section. Darn, I forgot. I need to document my process and include these steps next time. Okay. That's how that learning is, is so much more valuable. The other thing is that we're, we're going to talk about learning outcomes this afternoon, but it's tied to, as your instructor, I need to make sure that you know this particular specific thing. So if I go to my favorite nighttime reading, okay, students, I curl up with this every night because I memorize it. Oh, I'm just kidding. Anyway, but if I have a specific outcome under epidemiology, which we all love, uh, day one veterinary graduates must be able to know and understand the general principles of descriptive epidemiology, its application to disease control, and the ability to access and use appropriate information sources. Am I teaching what they need to be able to do to get there? And am I giving them feedback in areas where they are not there? So specific to the outcomes, not something that I'm making up because I, um, I grew up on a farm, so I know all about this. So let me tell you the real, this is what really happens. Or I had a practice and this is what we really do. You know, this stuff is nice. You can't do that. You have to stay true to the outcomes because that is how we know that the people who graduate for the program are going to be qualified. So, and you're only assessing outcomes. Need to know, need to know. Those are the important things. Nice to know is the part that you share. In my experience, this is a story where I learned and it maybe it helps them remember, but don't evaluate them on things that are outside of that core body of knowledge. And when we talk about curriculum mapping, that core body of knowledge is really important to define because then we are staying on track. We know who's contributing to that. And we're not adding things because they are a personal preference or something that you are interested in. It's at the core of what's going on and that's where you're assessing them. So we have that need to know, nice to know, who cares? That's the last circle, right? And it may be really important to you, but if it's not important to students in terms of what they need to know, then, then you're not going to assess that. Uh, the other thing, and, and again, it goes back to some of those three uh, points that I had the students vet, that they said were, okay, vet in the terms of approve, not vet in the terms of veterinarian. Um, don't bring in assessment for things you didn't teach. Mm -hmm. And if you have carefully mapped out your course, all the things that you are going to teach will be in your plan at the beginning and you will be there throughout. It won't be the last minute and you'll be, oh, well, I need to find out if they understand this process. Well, if you didn't teach it, how on earth would they understand it? And you may say, Jay, that sounds ridiculous, but people do that all the time. They'll go back to this and go, oh, well, I wonder if they can do these important things. Well, did you teach them? Well, no. Well, then there's no way that you can be confident that they can do it. Makes sense, but it's something that, uh, that we struggle with. Okay. Another practice. Is this good assessment? I want you to be able to, to answer that question, yes or no, and why. So here's the assessment. You would be happy to see that there's criteria on this one.
five, four, three, two, one, and time. Okay. Is this good assessment? Who it, who has an opinion? I know you all have opinions. What about this? The first two should be your more beta. It should be 40, 40, 10, 10. Quality of video, okay. can, have less load, Quality of video can have less. So video is not important. You said 40, 40, 10, 10. 10, 10. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's fine. <clears throat> if planning is there, exe perfect execution will take less. Okay. Why, why shouldn't the uh, video be 30? No, because the first two are more important. Okay. Are you teaching a video production class? No. 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 <laughs> so if they have a really bad video, mm -hmm. should they be penalized? No. no. Oh. Less, very less. Okay. What about use of class time? Are you marking them on their organizational skills? Okay. This point is not clear. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? What do you mean by this? Use? Well, did they get finished? Did they make a beautiful video no, in no, one no. class? It should be less time <laughs> because they are just learning, so they can need more time. Other thoughts? But there's some things that can be learned indirectly. Also. Okay. Yeah. Everything is not uh, taught directly. That uh, I think that should have even. Wh which one? The class time. Okay. Well, you're the teacher, so you can decide if, if you want to do that. But there is a, there's definite uh, agreement that maybe the quality of video is not relevant. Quality of video, not that important. And I, I searched and searched. I could not find video production in this document or in this document. But yet, people who do presentations, for example, will grade students on their ability to be public speakers. Yeah, I have same point to address that. Uh, that includes your other soft skills mm -hmm. that may be incorporated, not directly taught, but uh, that should be there so that you can perform better at some competitive stage. Absolutely. And the soft skills and the communication skills are in this document. But did you teach them? Uh, not really as a part of curriculum, but through some webinars or some language lab, creation of language lab, we mm -hmm. have some, somewhere uh, these components are there, not as a part of curriculum. Okay. So if it becomes co-curricular, then there's still a way to give people feedback and assess them on it, but maybe it doesn't make its way into this particular mark. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for that. Students. Hi, students. What do you think of this as a grading system? Would you be happy with that? So I think only first two should be evaluated. For yep. Okay. Ooh, 50 50. Okay. A high roller. Yes. And why is that? I think it's a, I think it's a valid point. Why do you say that? So I think the last two points are not important. Yeah. Okay. I'll go back to the faculty and see what they think. Hmm? Do you agree? No. No? Okay. So if there's a disconnect between you and your student, do you know your student over there? Yes. Okay. I yeah. <laughs> the last four point, in my opinion, mentioned the extra effort that has been put by the students, so it should be given something. Okay. Uh, Some not only that, uh, probably uh, when they are writing an essay question, mm. uh, the uh, same content can be uh, written in two different ways. So teacher will mark a uh, little extra to those who are presenting in a good mm -hmm. way. So that presentation does matter. Uh, even the content is same. If presentation is made in a better way, that may fetch better mark by the evaluator. Even slightly better. Yeah. Yes, it was more sincere. Also, sincere, they have the capability to uh, represent things because uh, it's not only the writing part when you have to go uh, for some presentation, maybe at higher level or maybe yeah. uh, at the end. Presentation does matter. Right. And yesterday we dealt with one point from where we all inspired to be a teacher. Yes. And they will be inspired from us from these points also. Like I'm presenting, I'm making a good presentation mm -hmm. or a bad presentation. Yeah. So that presentation style that would be liked by them. And they will try to incorporate that thing when they would be teacher in future. Mm -hmm. 
so they are also learning such things indirectly not uh, directly but indirectly but can you give a mark for indirect yes, yes. we should okay <laughs> somebody draws an encyclopedia <laughs> diagram yeah. we must so definitely is going to get good yeah presentation we have presentation yeah. will fetch some some marks indirectly then you have to teach them if you want them to be good presenters and you want to give them a grade then you have to teach them which you did not not is just taught indirectly which you did not but uh, yeah. uh, everything cannot be taught by or everything yeah. but then you cannot assess something should be learned by others experience yeah. others uh, skills also then maybe there's the opportunity to provide a co-curricular record. That's something we do in our university with things that fall outside of the content, outside of the learning outcomes that are necessary, but are helpful for their development as professors, professors as students and, and presenters. That's what I was trying to say. You can have an official documentation of that. So maybe you do run a workshop on presentation and you and there is the ability to give them feedback but on something like this you can see the students are like oh i don't want to get marked on but, something but, i'm not good each at each type of uh, <laughs> these webinars seminars yeah. these uh, trainings they are ongoing side by side yeah since last two three years i'm give a uh, video a small video to them yeah and uh, ask them to evaluate yeah and uh, then you take feedback from them why you have given more marks they will include the uh, right, yeah. the way that video has been presented. Yes. If right. they are giving that way, then they should or learn liking others. in terms of simply like liking, even the content is same. Mm -hmm. The liking will be more towards the way uh, mm -hmm. that has presented in a bit. That's why video tutorials have been prepared. Yes. yes. And they have been uploaded on the YouTube channel. And a lot of effort has been put mm -hmm. by the faculty. So I think it's good like uh, Previously, I was uh, taking one class of skin scrapings. Means whatever we are getting irritation in that one. So when I went with one of the batch uh, for this, uh, what to say, this uh, tour, educational tour, went to a pig farm, and some pigs were showing the sign. I made a video, and in the next class, the next batch, I have added to it. Mm -hmm. So it, it it's always helpful. The whatsoever video you are not doing today, I took the class of paper report. I told them there is a beautiful video of the clinical sign on YouTube. You please search on that. Yeah. And, and those are great ways of reinforcing content and prevent or presenting it in a different format as opposed to simply a lecture. That visual connection, the context can be replicated if yeah, because manuals are already there for the practicals. <coughs> so you can provide them incentive of marks in the form of how regular you are in checking your manuals. It's not that you will make a, we are not to make an artist here, but at least things should look like this. If this Aesthetic points well, are well, there. Yeah. Yes. So for, for me, I think they should be marked basically based on their knowledge for that subject only mm -hmm. or for that, but should not be on the way they have made those presentations or videos. Mm -hmm. Because here, the, here we want to see them to be a vet. Yeah. Other than a good video maker, a photographer. Right. But, uh, so uh, uh, let me finish. Uh, and then, <laughs> so, please, you can go ahead if you want. So, that. so the other thing is that the way we present the things is a separate thing. Correct. We need to teach our students, even if we are doing workshops, they, are, they need to be hands on training. Mm. So we did have those things in our PG teaching. Mm. We, we do have, but we are not doing that. Exactly. Oh, and our hands on training is there. But, but we don't do that. Component. But we don't do that. We, we do should that. accept that. <laughs> we don't do that. For PG students, we are doing that. Yes. We are running some workshops. Mm -hmm. We even invite international speakers. We did have a few workshops in collaboration with USAS. We are having yeah. some collaboration. But we are not doing that for undergrad students. So marking them without teaching them, it's not good at all. Yeah. Yeah. And and with the discussion that's gone on today, you can see how it's really difficult for people to come to that conclusion. But that you can't grade students on something that you haven't taught them. Yes. And even just presenting them with information, <laughs> it's like giving them a mark for coming to class. They come to class, maybe they're in the, you know, we talked about the back row. 
they're doing this right so they will hide their laptops okay. Yeah, like okay yeah oh i got it right and and you were like oh there's my favorite student in the back row paying attention this never they're happens. now learning so and you are not a teacher yes. if you are not able to differentiate yes, yes. But we are also not have... giving the 50 marks for the last two points. Yes. Yeah. The 10 and 10, 20 marks. Yes. Yeah. We are not here to make 95 percentile students. Simply, way, it's my way of looking. We are, I'm telling you, we are making here veterinary officers. Yes. Not veterinary doctor. There is one group on the, uh, this WhatsApp, veterinary clinical knowledge. Our students have created the uh, group. He is on that group. Yeah. Uh, they, I got the opportunity being a para at uh, means a para clinicals so that they have anyway. Students are sending beautiful pictures, mm -hmm. and we are also learning. Oh yeah, and I think so that it's uh, we are taking the photographs from that also. Yeah, and that's yeah. that's the value add. Yeah. But you're not you're not teaching them photography. You're not teaching video making. The, you're teaching these things are uh, standing up. The these element, things more help. But can people can you learn that thing? But it's you can encourage them to do that. Yeah. You should not give them. No, no. The there should be definitely. Marks. Yeah. There should be ten <laughs> marks. It's, it's it's good. Why marks are important? We are yeah. teacher. We are not uh, like these things. But we have to make good presentation. We had to uh, have to taught them in a better way. Yeah. Then from where we will learn? Yeah. We have learned from our teachers what they are doing. Then simply you can take these notes and vomit out all the material. It's very easy. Are there, then what is the need of yeah, Because these students in future, they are going to communicate with yes. the words. Yeah. If they don't have that communication skill, That's then what? how they will convey to the farmers that what they need to Yeah. No. And, and I agree 100%, but in this particular situation, I got you. Um, we, uh, we asked them to make a video and mark them on a video. Sir, next slide. We maybe okay. never talk. I, my point is that if we are saying that the, the my colleagues who yeah. aren't really needs to be marked on their presentations or something like that, I think there should, should be some other class where they can do that, those communication skills or presentation skills, rather than teaching them yes. while we are... Their curriculum is sir, so cumbersome. Sir, it's not like, like uh, 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 but they should not be marked teaching yes. presentation. It's uh, uh, yes. maybe for presenting well, in a visual... But if we don't teach them, why we way. are marking them based on that? Sir, it's not... However, like... it is a good quality as a skill, mm. as well as an art. But it shouldn't be like that. We don't teach them, but we are marking. You them. can encourage them. Don't mark yeah. them. So, yeah. Visually appealing way, sir. No, that's fine. Yeah, that is what we just feeling is next slide, sir. We are well. Oh, I love anything. But we can for some yeah. marks, sir. This is oh. why. This is why you all work at a university. No, uh, <laughs> yes, because we are talking about really important things. And and when I asked the students what they wanted to be marked on, you saw that there was a disconnect. Right. And so that's regardless of where it is. And, and I don't want us to get hung up on the presentation stuff because I, I agree. I think it is an important interpersonal communication skill and trait that everyone should have. But um, you cannot mark. You have to make sure that everybody knows what's going on. You want back in. OK. I think okay. if the marks are, should be based on the video quality, then it should be mentioned. In the okay, it's fabulous. The other thing that was in there was the notion of, and nobody picked up on it, was the idea of peer. The main thing is that Peers. nobody sees the first page of the manual, yeah. which is having instruction, simply come to the lab in proper lab code. Yeah, and they never do. Marked out of hundred by peers. Yeah. By other students. Yeah. So maybe the video part is the part that the peers... So you can freeze the... Okay, you put it at five... Yes, yeah, you, you got my return, put it at five. Yeah. five. I'll tell you, I, uh, yesterday I told you that Dr. P and the Vidya. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, microbiology was yeah. taught by a very tough task mother, Dr. M.S. O'Brien, yeah. and Dr. P and the Vidya, very student friendly. So, what Sir told, Sir told you, uh, write your complete notes of my portion, mm -hmm. be attentive. Let these notes be checked by me. I will give you 10 extra marks. And he gave that marks, but uh, the students, 20% students were writing the notes, 60% wrote the notes. And from his portion, the minimum percentage was 68%. Uh, I'm taking the average five. for the rest of the microbiology, it was 55%. Hmm. So that is different. That means the teacher was, hey, we are talking about students. So I tried this one. And 
someone somebody complained oh. <laughs> so it, let me let me put off the hand of the stove in a quick manner yeah so incentive has to be given because it's the human nature we are working from incentive here great okay so next slide is for free no <laughs> <laughs> So when we're talking about assessment, and I love the discussion that we just had, I think it is passionate and it's interesting and it opens up so many opportunities. <clears throat> but this, this assessment tool, say the one that we just looked at, does it actually allow me to be able to communicate the student's level of understanding to someone who is watching me teach or observing my class? So if I have that assessment, does it make sense to someone who is not familiar with what's going on? And we did talk a bit about external examiners, and we're not going to open that can of worms just yet, but the idea of someone coming in and not being familiar with everything that happened before they came into my class, does that make sense to them? Completely unfamiliar does not make, it make a sense, but... Uh... They also say they are also having same expertise. Mm -hmm. So it's not like that uh, anatomy of buffalo. Buffalo, yes. is, having <laughs> buffalo, is, yeah. buffalo is having horns, and yeah. then another will not teach that yes. buffalo is not having mm -hmm. horns. Yes. It's not like that. No. So unfamiliar peers, they are not accurate, but familiar peers having some different point of view, that is accurate. Perfect. And that's maybe where, if you're not sure about a, an assessment you're doing, to share it with a colleague. So if you have someone that is at another university who is teaching the same material, maybe share it with them and say, does this make sense? Would you use this in your class? And if they say, oh, I love that. It's better than mine. <laughs> Can I use it? Or they'd say, oh, I don't really understand this part of it. It engages you in that dialogue and you get a chance to refine your assessment. Again, we're not telling you that you have to do this and you have to do this. These are ways of making small changes, small improvements so that you know that your assessment is working, right? Um, is it something I've taught? I'm not gonna open up that one either because we just talked about that for 20 minutes and I don't know if we're on the same page yet. Um, but, but am I assessing what I've actually taught them or hope that they have learned, okay? I think we went through that one quite yeah, regularly. Yeah. Some of you are on one side of that argument and some of you are on the other and, and uh, I'm glad I didn't have to bring it up and, and light a fire under that conversation because you're all doing your own Bunsen burners today. There is a good fire underneath that one. Um, does the assessment reflect my knowledge of the students? So there's a, a unique one. Do I have confidence that my students know what to do? Do I have to teach them some skills? Do I have to teach them how to make a video or do a presentation? And if I, if I think, well, in your course, you taught them that, so I don't have to. So I'm confident that they've already been exposed to that information. And then I can say, yeah, I want you to make a video or I want you to do a, a group presentation because I know in a previous class they've done that. And if not, I may have to back up. Uh, one thing that I work with students a lot on is their writing. So if I have students who have really good ideas, but they're not able to articulate them and write them, I don't want them to be negatively impacted by me asking them to do an essay. Because I know they know the information, but it's this, it's getting from here to here, from here to here. That's the problem. So I would sit down with them and then get them to a level where I'm, I'm confident that they will be able to tell me, Jay, this is what I know in a way that, that is clear and concise. So that's something that when you're creating your assessments, you know, they have to be uh, achievable. And if you're asking students to do something that is not in their skill set, sometimes you have to take a step back before they are, they're able to, to move ahead. But again, I, I, I hear from this group that you're aware of that and you're thinking about those things. And so that gives me great confidence. Uh, where are we at? Do you want to take a little break? Definitely. 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Perfect. Fabulous. Let's take a break. Let's stand up. Let's stretch. Let's think about assessment or not think about assessment for 10 minutes and then come back and we'll work through some material. I think what uh, 
we are missing out here is this assessment is for undergrads postgraduates phd level so that video thing you said i would say for post postgraduate or phd level here our main purpose in vet school is to produce good veterinary doctors yeah okay so so does that fall outside of what they would do in their normal everyday practice? If you're trying to create researchers or postdocs. Yeah, then... you should not be creating researchers at uh, undergrad level. Yeah. Your main purpose should be to make good doctors. If I keep on teaching them receptors, nobody would pass. And it is there in syllabus. So I just give them knowledge, remember them. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you understand them for... Uh, applying the drugs, but I should ask questions from drugs so that that is where the doctor's role is, not knowing the receptors. Yeah. Trust me, it's it's a huge subject. Yes. Yeah. Some awareness or or yeah, awareness no, would be there. They yeah. should know about it or know where to find uh, but out. It should not be there on the, in the exam, in the assessment. Because veterinary science is such a huge subject, and especially pharmacology is very large. So instead of focusing on receptors and uh, you know molecules, it should be at the you know clinically pertinent levels. I agree. Both it is both huge. It is very huge. It is very huge. There is a there is a uh, you know there is a substance five hydroxytryptamine. You know heard of oh, yeah. it? Oh yeah, serotonin. Yeah, I know. You know no, I don't know about it. No, you know in our syllabus. Okay, you know in our syllabus. There is number of how many receptors it has got? 14. 14 different types of 5 HD1, 5 HD2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and subtypes. What's the idea of asking them about the receptors? Is there in the syllabus? If I want, no, yeah. they'll just be, you know, engrossed in their receptor thing and forget the real thing. Yeah. I should be asking them about the antagonists or agonists of that. Serotonin, not about the receptors. I should give them knowledge about the receptors, but not assess them about the receptors. That is just hardcore science at the PhD level. Yeah. No, I agree. 14 types of receptors for one neurotransmitter. Yeah, external examination. Yeah, very good. No. If he wants to ask from, he'll keep on a 5-HT2A. 5-HT3B, what is the role? Oh, I think the pants help a little bit. So we are actually teaching the real things up to the pharmacist. Yeah, no air conditioning. And veterinary graduates, you are, <laughs> I mean, we are confusing them with so much. <laughs> oh, feels good to stand up. Okay. You want to rest from? You can use the rest from here if you want. I might walk down the hallway. Yeah, just move my legs a little bit. Mm. It's too much city. <laughs> yeah. Blood flow to the tea. Yeah. Ah, sir, what is it? Ah, sir, I am. 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 ਯਾਰ <laughs> 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 ਇੱਕ ਦਿਨ ਉਹ ਬੇਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਜਿਹਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਫਿਰ ਨਾ ਉਹ ਟਾਈਮ ਜਿਹਾ ਲੱਗ ਜਾਣਾ ਨਾਲੇ ਉਹ ਐਸਟੀਮੇਟ ਵੀ ਫੜਨੀ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਕੌਣ ਸੇ ਬਣਿਆ ਬੇਲ ਦਾ ਬਣਿਆ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਐਸਟੀਮੇਟ ਜੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਮੈਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਹਿ ਦਿੰਨਾ ਜੇ ਐਸਟੀਮੇਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਮਿਲੇ ਨਾ ਤਾਂ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਨਹੀਂ ਬੇਲ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੇ ਡੀਨ ਆਫਿਸ ਪੁਰਾਣਾ ਵਾ ਮੈਂ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸਿੰਗ ਦੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਕਰਨੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਆਪਣੇ ਪੈਸੇ ਆਏ ਸੀ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਚ ਨਾ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਪੈਣਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਂ ਕਰਦਾ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਜਿਹਾ ਨਾ ਦਾ ਨਿਕਲ ਹੀ ਬਈ ਬੜਾ ਛੇਤੀ ਉਹ ਮ
You cannot assess students for the thing you have not talked about. How can you assess? Girl, that's it. Girl, that's it. That's it. That's it. ਤਾਂ ਸਾਡਾ ਸਿਲੇਬਸ ਐਨਾ ਮੈਂ ਦੱਸ ਰਿਹਾ ਜੀ ਇੱਕ ਸਟਰੋਟਨ ਹੈ ਨਾ 14 ਟਾਈਪਸ ਆਫ ਰਿਸੈਪਟਰਸ ਆ ਸਰ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਮੈਂ ਜੇ ਲੋਕ ਨੂੰ ਫੇਰ ਤਾਂ ਜੇ ਆਪਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਨੂੰ ਮਤਲਬ ਜੇ ਪੜਾਉਂਦੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਏ ਆ ਹਾਂ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਆਪਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਸਰ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਮਤਲਬ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਪੜਾਓ ਤਾਂ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਪੜਾਓ 10 ਮਿੰਟ ਸਪੈਂਡ ਕਰ ਦੋ ਕਲਾਸ ਦੇ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਐਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਟ ਥੈਮ ਓਕੇ ਯੂ ਮੇਡ ਅ ਗੁੱਡ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਅਦਰਸ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਆਲਸੋ ਮੇਕ ਬਟ ਯੂ ਕਾਂਟ ਕਿਚ ਥੈਮ 10 ਮਿੰਟ ਐਂਡ ਤੇ ਲਾਏ ਜਾ ਸਕਦੇ ਜੇ ਬਾਲੀ ਗੱਲ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਪਰ ਟਾਈਮ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਖਤਮ ਕਰਨ ਨੂੰ ਸਰ ਕਿ ਵੀ 50 ਮਿੰਟ ਵੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਦੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਕੋਲ ਟਾਈਮ ਮਤਲਬ Don't lose this or you're stuck with me forever. Okay. They won't let me back in Canada. ਇਹ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਆਪਣਾ ਨਤਾਸ਼ਾ ਦਾ ਸ਼ੋਅ ਬੜੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੇਰਾ ਮਤਲਬ ਅੱਧੇ ਘੰਟੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਹੀ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਤੇ ਪੰਜ ਘੰਟੇ ਬਾਅਦ ਹਨਾ ਚਲ ਮੈਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਆਉਂਗਾ ਫਿਰ ਹਨਾ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਅਮਰੀਕਾ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਆਈ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਕਿਹੜ
Jane? Yes, sir. I will. Oh, that's right. You have to leave right away. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You'll be here tomorrow? Oh, you'll be here in the Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I didn't expect you to come back. So, yeah. Okay. But I don't want to be able to go to your students. So, if you don't come back, then and you're celebrating. Okay. Thanks for reminding me. No. They are playing number land with it. They're delivering it. I don't do anything at all. Yes, that's how I get this. Perfect paper. Yeah, I know what that sound is. Which one? That. The, uh, actually, that's the dean. Dean. Yeah, uh, they have the, all the person from the office. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the administrator will have his or her own method of communication with yeah. the other staff. It is the <laughs> plan. It's uh, like a Pavlov. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's communication with his uh, PA yeah. and other staff. Yeah. And there are some bells which will ring even when the bell is, uh, person is over there. Uh, <laughs> See, I always had a door between my office and my admin support, and so I used to yell a lot. Sometimes, hey, no, no, basically here. because of the colonization, these yeah. things are now uh, in our DNA. Oh. <laughs> What's that? The yelling? Bell, bell sir, respected, sir, yeah. with the due respect, I want to say, yeah. I, I have to say that I want to leave for half an hour, please. Finally, do this. I shall be highly thankful to you. For we just had that conversation. Yeah. <laughs> he has. I think his PhD you, from you, Canada. Yes. You can tell uh, from the bell the way it is ringing. Yeah. The mood of that officer too. Mm. Really? Yeah. With with some officers, not me. I did have that experience with our previous HOD. Doctor Vijay Singh Malik, na. Yeah. Oh, doctor, I am busy. Well, the state department, the establishment, the city. I totally agree with what you just said. Uh, actually, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, actually, there was one fellow in our yeah. department, the previous end of the department asked if you will head that department. You should improve on these grounds. His answer was, you should only know how to ring the bell oh. for a head up to back. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's like to profess. Yes. Wow. Hey, I, I don't know that I could use a bell or a ringer or something like that. It's different. And so that just gets passed down to the next dean. So the next dean will have that <laughs> clicker as well. One o'clock. I'm going to try to be done by one o'clock. Yes. Yeah. Right. And then we'll start at two thirty. Yep. So you can actually. Thirty will be okay. So you can have then we'll do some time. of our other work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Lunch yeah. is a bag of chips, part and parcel. Uh, yeah. Lunch is never important in this university. <laughs> oh. So we are. We should work, work right through. I should not. No, I think we should take a break because uh, we must profess what we teach. Ah, yes. Uh, taking classes only for fifty-five minutes. That's all. Be it theory, be it practical. After that, it's done. Well, I have fifty minutes left. So, okay. So we have a brief lecture, and then yeah. maybe I'll try to get done early. Oh wait, I never get done. Early. <laughs> Try. Oh, you're gonna send me back to Canada after all. Right? <laughs> that was it. That was your one chance to keep me forever. <laughs> Even back. Yeah. 
ਤੁਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਦੇਖੋ ਅੱਜ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੁੰਡੇ ਦੀ ਪੇਪਰ ਸ਼ੋਇੰਗ ਹੈ they march back into the room ਜੋ ਮੇਰੇ ਮੁੰਡੇ ਦੀ ਸਮਾਈਲਸ ਆਫ देयर ਫੇਸਸ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੀ ਘਰ ਵਾਲੀ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਹਾ ਅੱਜ ਮੇਰੇ ਪੇਪਰ ਰੈਡੀ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਬਰਥਡੇ ਪਾਰਟੀ अनवॉन्टेड थिंग I get your bell. Hmm? What word is that? This one. This one is the great Indian bustard. Okay. What does it look like? Uh it's a bird with uh, thin legs. You can say that a miniature form of a crane. Okay. So it's like short bird. Long skinny legs. Uh, yeah. You, the go. bird which uh, no, no, no. give eggs in the nest. Oh, Pateri ah. Pateri ah. Kono to pata man dikhai dende. Kon di sapne de. I went for a walk this morning to figure out which bird There is one beautiful yeah. chart made by Punjab Agriculture University on the birds of Punjab. Well, I need to get that. Okay, it's is random. Is it online? No, no, no. It's in Punjabi but. Oh. So you have to translate it for me. You can use Oh, Google I can't. Google search. I you can use Google can Translate. I have that. Yeah, you can you can use Google, Google Translate. translate. Because I need But to... Google Translate will also no, will not translate. फिर <laughs> roti we were having fun at breakfast time we were trying to figure out what i was eating for breakfast and it was paratha paratha mm-hmm. paratha stuffed paratha stuffed roti yes it's so good <laughs> with a lot of butter i was stuffed full of roti after breakfast the next day which is Stuffed roti. <laughs> <laughs> It's not detecting. It will not detect the front half. So we are now assessing Google also. Yes, <laughs> we're we're finding out it's yeah. Bari. There it is. Bari roti. Hmm. Bari roti. Bari roti. Bari roti. Bari roti. Stuffed roti. Yeah. It might be some other thing. Pari roti. Pari roti, okay. <laughs> Stop the pari chakki. Uh, Hello? Stop the roti. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you do a seating chart? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. चलो ठीक है परसों आई बात ठीक है
So in front of you or beside you or near you will be a piece of paper that has the big ideas of assessment. Okay. And this was actually created by uh, one of the teachers that I know that I have worked with. And it is intended to, it looks like that. It is intended to give you kind of a quick reference in terms of how am I doing with my own assessment practices? I asked you all to bring a syllabus today. Hopefully you did. It's there in this uh, okay. WhatsApp. Yes, good. So you have it in your filing cabinet, some of you. Okay, good. Um, when you look at the assessments that you do, they can be guided and shaped by the principles that you see in this notion of the big ideas of assessment. And bless you all for being so interested in this. Some of these we've already touched upon today. Now, when I put this on the slide, I thought, oh, that's disgusting. You can't read it. So I went with this instead so you can actually read it. But these are things that, if you are new to teaching, can be very helpful. If you are experienced, it will allow you to reflect on maybe many years of practice. Oftentimes, what it does is it gives you the reassurance that what you're doing is the right thing and that you are successful. And a lot of that comes from mentorship or our colleagues or feedback from students to say, how can we make this better? And so your assessment practices evolve over time. Uh, what you see here, that notion of behavior, we'll just kind of start at the top and work through. So are you grading behavior? And if so, are you teaching it? And you'll see on the handout, it gives you a bit more detail there, uh, punishing students. So academic integrity is a really important, it's always been important, but now we have AI that is helping students to basically put their assignments together without having to do much thought or work. Yeah. Chat GPT, Chat GPT. Oh, okay. Um, we thought the same thing about Wikipedia, right? When it came along and people are like, oh, all the information of the world is gonna be online and we don't have to teach anything. But we realized that Wikipedia can be a useful tool in some situations for exposing people to basic ideas and concepts. Chat GPT might also be a useful tool in showing people how to improve their writing. But to use it as a replacement for the student's brain is where we run into problems. So if we are punishing our students for academic dishonesty, is that is there a way that we can take that out of the learning? So maybe they are still learning. We don't want to fail them out of their program for acting dishonestly because they may know a lot and have skills. But how do we instill in them or have them appreciate the fact that by learning, developing your own skill set, you're going to be better in the end? If you are dishonest now, you're going to be a dishonest veterinarian and you're not going to be successful. So the idea of taking those two pieces apart and not, you know, if someone is being dishonest, not kicking them out of the program or failing them, but teaching them and still grading their marks. So that idea of behavior, uh, we, I talked about attendance, the same idea. Just because you show up to every class in my university, in my world, doesn't entitle you to 25% of free marks. Mm. I don't mark attendance. I mark performance. If you come for five out of the 20 classes, I'm going to talk to you and I'm going to communicate my expectation. But if you're able to do the work and you do it well, then you're going to get an appropriate grade for that. That's something that sometimes the students who come to every class still don't know what's going on. And the only reason they pass is because we give them a free ride in terms of their behavior. Because they sit in the front row and they... They nod and they smile and they encourage us. And those are the best students to have, right? They nod and smile, encourage us. Nod, oh yeah, I saw a smile, another smile, it is nodding, okay. I give them all 100% because they're listening, attentive, but I don't know what they're learning. So I can't really give them the grief. We talked about this already, the idea of, of reference to the outcomes, the learning outcomes. This afternoon, we're gonna talk more about that. 
be really clear right off the bat. So in your syllabus, does it say, this is my grading. If you receive, if you achieve mastery, you will get a 90% in this class. If you are okay, you will get a 75 in this class. If you are substandard, you will get a 40 in this class. Like, are you communicating that to your students right away so that they can, they know what to do? If they're like, I just need to pass this class, then I'm going to do this much effort. If I want this to be my profession, I want to get as good a mark as possible. And then they can make that informed decision because you're communicating to them what you hope to do in terms of, of the assessment. Uh, criterion based, what does that make people think when I say criterion based assessment? What do you think of? You were the first to nod. Uh, different criteria should be there for evaluation that you decide uh, before assessment. Yes. That you apply for a one. Yes. So it's really clear and it's laid out. These are the criteria that I expect. Yes. Written in a way that people understand. And so a student can be confident that they are working towards something that is really clear. thank you. Yes. Uh, in this world, the veterinary medicine world, that notion of criterion based is becoming more and more accepted based on the reading that I've done. Is that true? Do you have lots of criterion-based assessment in what you're doing? Not lots, no, no, just beginning. Okay. It's not, beginning. Lot, not lots. Okay, so it's an evolutionary thing. Um, we talked about quality of assessment that show individual learning. So we are ultimately teaching individuals, even when we have them work collaboratively. And, and in most professions, we want people to be part of a team. But when they are learning, they aren't part of a team yet. They may graduate and become part of a team. I had a really good tour with the head of uh, large animal, was he the large animal surgery guy or the surgery general? He's a professor. Okay. He's a professor. Well, he should be. He's very good. <laughs> anyway, um, but he talked about when they teach large animal um, surgery that they will have people spec, you know, learn everything, but really become good at three different animals. So they may be really good at equine, uh, bovine, and another eye of a baby. What's the Bubeline. Bubeline. There you go. Okay. Uh, and then they may work with a group later who are specialized in feline, uh, uh, canine, and porcine, for example. Signs, right. Okay. Uh, and that's when you become a team. But you are, when they are learning, assessing them on their ability as an individual, not part of a team. And that's really where we have students sometimes that sneak through our system because they coattail or they work with groups and they are not really contributing. So it's important to make sure that you know how individuals are doing, even when you have group assignments or group assessments. And it's okay to do that, but you still need to be able to figure out how the individual is, is uh, getting through what's going on. Uh, good discussion today. Lots of formative, lots of assessment, uh, assessment for learning, not a whole lot of assessment of learning. That summative piece at the end, that evaluation. It's okay to have a lot of practice till people get confident and comfortable, and then you can apply your knowing lenses and tell them where you think they are on a rating scale, a number or a lettering rating scale or whatever. So lots of formative assessment will make things more successful for your students. Uh, this is a one that sometimes we get hung up on as instructors. If someone does poorly right off the bat, we don't give them the benefit of the doubt moving forward. So if they, we have a, a really important midterm exam and they do poorly, do we give them a chance to write that again? No, 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 no chance. Do we think that they are always going to be unsuccessful and a bad student moving forward? Not necessarily. So sometimes uh, poor initial performance can really have a negative impact on our students. So we want to make sure that we give them a fresh slate each time, a chance to continue to learn, to move past if they do poorly on some of those assessments, as opposed to just branding them as someone who can't be successful and they're not going to learn and they're not going to be uh, a graduate of our program. 
And we have these, it's human nature sometimes. We have this preconceived idea of if a student does poorly, we have no reason to know why they did poorly. Maybe they had studied very, very hard and then they got sick the night before an exam, or maybe something's going on in their personal life that is distracting them. Those are things that we want to ensure that our students get a second chance if possible. There is a provision for makeup examination. Okay. Here. Yeah. If they miss, then we can. If they miss the exam on medical grounds or okay. other valid grounds, then there is a provision for makeup exam. And they can do the internship two times or three times? I can't remember. read that. Two. Three times? Nobody yeah. fails in your internship, no? You get an extension. Okay. Or they can come back and start over if they're doing really bad the next year. Yeah. One, one more thing is there, uh, there are three internal examinations per year. Yes. And out of them, uh, they have choice to give either two, or if they give three, then two. Best, best of three. Best, best of, of three. Okay. Okay. Best Good. of three, they are selected. Good. So that is in keeping with that, that notion of positive achievement and, and not penalizing someone for doing poorly on one, giving them the uh, opportunity to kind of reestablish. Yes, themselves. but. Uh, but it has a negative impact. It has oh, negative yeah. impact. The portion for which that exam was held, if some, that student is not coming for that particular portion, that is zero. Okay. Yeah. No meaning of teaching that uh, four months yeah. wow. if they are not giving exam. So everybody they, is not doing. Maybe but uh, likewise, uh, on tenth I had exam out of ninety nine students, seven were absent. Mm. So because they think they can take they, the other two, they can give so they just so skip that slavery. Take the easier courses and leave the ah, so heavier. They're gaming the system. Then. Mm. Yes, yeah. yes. Small tweaks. So in the next uh, minimum standard regulation that are proposed mm. uh, from our institute, it has been proposed that all exams must be compulsory. Mandatory. Yes. Well, you think yes. yes. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> yes. Where do I sign? I'll sign that uh, any day. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, really important to engage the students in the assessment process. So if you have that first day of class, when you go through a syllabus, ask the students what they think. Is that something that they understand? Or is there some kind of, um, you know, is there something that's going on that would interfere with their ability to be successful? Or did they struggle with something in the previous class? And they may ask you for some, Kind of remedial work or some learning outside of the regular events that you have planned, or should it be 50 50 or should it be 40 50 10? Or you know, even just so you have that dialogue, and if you don't change your assessment, at least they know what they need to do to be successful. So if it is a presentation, then they're like, okay, I have to get on Google and figure out how to do a good job of this. Medial classes yes. are there, yeah. But uh, one point I want yeah. to add, this is a streak, for example. Yep. And uh, if we plan that uh, these students, they should be stick on this particular thing only, then how they will develop their thinking ability. So there should be something in assessment that uh, makes some evaluation or assessment of their inherent abilities, but they are retrieving uh, extra than what they, are, they have to. But what about the students who do everything right but don't do the extra? Should they be penalized for not doing the extra? No, they will not be penalized. Right. But yet the other people who do the extra but, stuff, they have the opportunity. Who, who is doing good effort? <laughs> what is yeah. the fault of that guy? Who is doing in a better way? What is the fault? Who is attending 100% class? Mm -hmm. Who is having good uh, uh, view in the in front of a teacher, then what is the fault of that guy? He is presenting in a nice way and other who is not coming and he is just making fun. Then why evaluation for that both is same? There should be some discrepancies. Uh, there should be some evaluation of better things. Mm -hmm. Indirect evaluation. Because the uh, below average student, they'll say, okay, What's the funny? You are you are so past. I are, I never studied. You yeah. you were studying throughout the year. Yet I passed. And, I have never studied. So. And we are dealing with the young minds. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's that's why uh, that's why that 50 50 that is not okay. That 40 40 10 10 yeah. or 45 45 5 5 yeah. is okay. okay. Yes. And as long as you're clear that those are your expectations, then you can do that. 
Yes. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. And I think that I think you're right. I I mean I believe in karma. I believe that if you are a student who puts in no effort and barely passes and gets a job, you're going to be a horrible vet. And you're going to have a rotten reputation. You're going to have no customers. You're going to have so you're going to get fired. <laughs> so so I I believe that in the end, ultimately, people who try to game the system or cheat the system will receive what they have invested. And if they've invested nothing, they will get nothing. But maybe I am, I am being- That's the whole point, actually. Yeah. Even if sometimes you are doing a good job, but uh, you know, assessment comes, it's not very good. Yeah. Then don't worry. He'll take care of everything. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> there must be something, uh, someone, yes, whom we can, uh, yeah, so you can say mm -hmm. ultimately we can rely on, um, or we can uh, even share that this is all because of our destiny, um, or because God yeah. doesn't want this. <laughs> <laughs> but the stars shine only when the night is dark. There you um, go, status of sir. Um. <laughs> Is you are all, very well. You're all philosophers. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Stars shine only in darkness. Some, in darkness. Some, yes. Some, sir. I am well, not crispy. The last one is really important as well. Try to have a variety of different assessments because it makes your courses more engaging. It makes the students more interesting, interested. It also gives you a chance to Look at those other skills. So if you're talking about those communication skills, have different ways for them to communicate. Don't just make it uh, a clinical practical exam. Give them other opportunities to share. Sitting down with your students and talking is a really good way. And we don't often have the time to do that. But maybe in advisory, you have a chance to sit down and hopefully the students will come and share. And, and then you learn more about them. And you also learn those things that Maybe they struggle to communicate with you in other ways. So that variety can be, can be more important. Okay, let's do an activity. Yay! Woo! Okay. Um, let's do it this one. So I ask you to bring your syllabus or to think about the course that you're courses that you're teaching now. And it can be undergrad, it could be masters, it could be postdoc, it could be whatever. But I want you to think about one of the things that you teach and how you evaluate. So maybe you do uh, boobless, boobless, and you have a chart. That's the horns, and that's the... Well, I was going to say, what yeah. I think you see? see, I'm not going to pass. Um, and then think about how you might want to change that. Yeah. So I'm going to give you five minutes. Okay to think about something that you're teaching now, how you assess it currently, and how you might change that assessment. Mm. And then I'm gonna ask you to partner up and share with some of the people in the room. Mm. Is that good? Actually, everybody has answer to that already it's because people keep on, the authorities keep on asking them, how can you, and they keep on replying. So they know the answer. Excellent. But, yeah. So I only have to give you three minutes. Yeah, that's fine. Is that fine? You want three minutes instead of five? Your colleague thinks that you already have the answer? Sir, he is the senior most of the uh, No, no, no. <laughs> You're wrong. He is the one. <laughs> oh, sir looks young. I'm sorry. He is no, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking about him. He is professing. Yes. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to give you three minutes. So you have a minute okay. to answer each one of these. Choose an activity. How are you evaluating it and how you might improve that? Course outline. Evaluation. It's here. We set a timer for three minutes. From course outline. From course outline. Evaluation of muscle relaxation. It can be. Or it can be another class that you just know what you do. The reason I ask you to bring the course outline is because sometimes it's helpful when you get the experiment and wanted to be on here. No, we I want you just to write it down, no, no, and then you, I'm going to have you meet with one of your followers. So there's no great thing. We should be allowed to demonstrate actual domestic. Yeah. 
जो वो भी खराब उसका जेनेटेरिया सबसे खराब बीस स्टूडेंट एक पांच सौ दिन प्रैक्टिकल बीस स्टूडेंट पांच एनिमल में आ जाता है टीचर साथ में आते हैं तो पर ऐसे कंटिन्यूस पांच क्लास लगाने तो क्या फन है फिर कहते हैं साइमुलेशन मोड में क्या है लोकेशन सिमिलर वे तो ना दो स्टूडेंट्स एक को जैसा हमारे पास बड़ी मिला है क्लिनिकल साइन आ गया डायग्नोस्टिक आ गया रेट आ गया आ गया ट्रीटमेंट आ गया के साथ ही जब इवैल्यूएशन का टाइम आऊंगा एक तो इन जो एक लार्ज एनिमल का मैं लार्ज क्लास नंबर में चला हूं हर पीजी और नंबर ऑफ सीट्स बेसिकली ड्यूरिंग द क्लास हां अब हमारे घर में दस ग्यारह स्टूडेंट आए पीजी के ग्यारह स्टूडेंट आए चलो एनिमल आ गए ग्यारह पीजी इंटर्नशिप इंटर्नशिप कोई बच्चा एक साथ गेम <laughs> I'm going to ask you to no, work with somebody else. So people on this side of the room, I'd like you to go to the other side of the room and this is the activity that we're going to do. I want you to meet with someone and share what you have done in terms of that change. So somebody on this side of the room, you're going to find a partner on this side of the room and say this is my assessment. This is what I do and this is what I think I would do to change it, modify it, improve it. Ready? Mm. Go. So you have to get up, and you actually have to meet with somebody on the other side of the room. There you go. So you are making coal and bonds break. There you go. Going to Wonderland. Yeah. Okay. We have one person. It's been. You have to stand up. If you want to be a student in your conversation, please do so. Go. Met now. Okay. Okay. ये 
ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਕਿ ਇਸ ਵਾਰ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਜਿੱਦਾਂ ਸਟੇਸ਼ਨ perfect timing you always end right on time i love this group it's so punctual and it's so organized it's fabulous can you go to the next slide well how was that 
experience. As expected. As expected. Oh, <laughs> you mean like fantastic, wonderful, eye-opening, excellent, or you already knew what you were going to do and it was a waste of time? No, no, no. no? Okay. Uh, it's good. Yeah. Why is it good? Good. You, uh, you will get to know what is the idea perceiving in the other mind which you might not have. Okay. Same so thing. did you ask for feedback on your idea? No. No? You just communicated that to no, no. your he partner? No, no. He did ask. Yeah. I asked him. He asked for Yeah. Okay. Good. So you had a chance to discuss your idea. The other thing is that when you have to go and sit across from someone, there is, we talk about pressure, right? Stress. Yes. So it's like, oh, well, I have to make sure I communicate this really clearly, much like you would want to do with your students. So when you're sharing your, your ideas around assessment with your students, you want to be able to. And so that was a good practice, a good opportunity. Did you get questions back from the person you're sharing with? What kind of questions did you get? You were the first to nod. Did the students find it, like when you worked with them, were they receptive or did they ask you questions for clarity? Sir, I discussed uh, with the students yeah. uh, because I'm a biochemist. So in biochemistry, there is a problem of, uh, so you say students cannot uh, remember the structure of uh, each and every biomolecules and in the metabolic processes, how the structures are changing. So I asked them a lot of uh, problems they faced while remembering these processes or structures or the functional groups or the channels to do the biomolecules like this. So, uh, and how we can we resolve them? So, they, were, they told me that uh, in, in, in some animations, the video animations, if some models will be there, yeah. so it will be good to remember, maybe easy to remember in the model, if it will depict the changes of functional groups of any uh, biomolecule in a model based or in video based, then it will be easier to remember. And mostly, practicing, self practicing is the solution for this, mm -hmm. for my course particularly. Because uh, the more you will practice the, the structures on uh, pen and paper, you can remember the course of the course. Splendid. So good opportunities to kind of rethink what you're doing. And what I see in that suggestion is assessment for learning. So how can they go through and practice and get better at it? So what they've su suggested is not a final exam or not another way of, of you being able to give them a mark, but a chance to how do I sit down with this? That's almost assessment as learning. Like they are almost self-realizing where the gaps are and helping you. And that's always a positive thing. Thanks for sharing that. That was good. Other thoughts? Well, did you have a great thing that you shared yeah, with him? And yeah. he was like, oh, you're the best. No, no, no. Okay. It's not like that. Okay. Uh, but he knows my most of people, they know each other's feelings, how we are feeling. Yeah. So I asked, talk to him, him and then doctor, that surgeon. Dr. Anand, yeah. then I talked to students, four groups, and basically everybody had You that. talked to everybody but me, I think. Oh, no, okay. never. Yeah. <laughs> no, not at all. So actually, everybody was feeling that instead of simulations, simulations or doing practicals on experimental animals like rat or mice, we should be demonstrating on pet animals or domesticated animals. There's no cruelty involved so that the students can appreciate better that in real setting, field settings, how the animal, how the drug is going to behave, or how the animal is going to react. Like he was saying, they are doing per rectal exam. Uh, you know, student to teacher ratio should be good. Well, here there are so many students and so less number of animals. How can they learn? So that's what I really. And then he said, they, when the animals are not sufficient, they say, okay, you practice in a phantom box. There's a phantom oh, yeah. box. So basically, and the students are also saying the same thing. What's the point of most of the things that they learned, they were never used by them. Good, so good practical feedback. Uh, yeah, all 100% practical. And this activity that you just did should be a part of your regular practice. Yeah. So you should feel okay to take assessments to students or to your colleagues and ask for their feedback. But the thing is, even if I d discuss with him, discuss with him, them with, or yep. anybody, it's not in my power to change. To, to change. I cannot change. Oh, it's a rigid system. It is a very yeah. council of India. Yes. That document dictates us to do that. So, no, this, no, not the this second one. Yes. Yeah. So you can do nothing. That's why I said most of <laughs> most of people have been discussing these things for years. Yeah. 
and yet they have not been able to change we can add on some courses because they yeah. say that you can change up maybe up to 20% but that is not desirable yeah. normally it is implemented in toto so to change that it's a big issue if we add yeah. on additional courses they become burden on the student yeah because you never take anything away you just add right it's like oh that would be good that would be good that would be good and pretty soon you have so much content and so much that students have to work through. Well, it's, uh, Dr. Baljeet came here for problem-based yeah. learning. Yes. You know? so, uh, that was a good concept. Uh, I think they are, they are having biomedical rounds. Mm -hmm. So that concept uh, we tried to introduce. We are taking it, but it's an additional sort of thing. It's not a part of their regular curriculum. But students are enjoying that. That's a feedback from the students. And that, I mean, ultimately, if you can't change the system, is it benefiting the students? So can you do something that helps them? We always you know, do something extra yeah. apart from that thing so that in real field setting, they get yeah. something. But I, under, but I know your frustration around, this makes no sense, why are we doing it? Because a higher power is saying you have to include it. And maybe in those new regulations that are coming out next year, there are some changes maybe that that hopes well, well we have got something called hopeful, yeah. uh, so. the, they, they say okay there's cruelty to animals you cannot do them in animals you do in models or in simulations or in just dummy boxes phantom boxes mm -hmm. so, <laughs> so if they have to handle that live animal for treatment what they will learn in the simulation model how can you learn in a plastic okay that's the same and maybe it's a way to introduce people of the concepts, but ultimately they, you are not vets treating plastic animals. You Everything cannot animals. be compensated by technology. Yes. So you have to do hands-on on real animals. Yes. Well, and I will say that I'm doing some research on, on virtual reality and some of the haptic devices that, but it's, we're a ways away from being able to put on goggles and gloves and have that be an actual well, like you to can perform surgery or to to uh, yes. give vaccinations. You will feel you will feel good when you will be doing, but when you will be seeing animal, you can't do anything because they're bigger, they're smaller, they're yeah. angry, they're happy, they're like it's a complete that it's a completely uh, different that animal. horse or that cow will kick. <laughs> yeah, it's like that seeing, simulation thinking and doing this yeah. thing. Like you can learn some sound, say frictional rubs or lub dub from computer, but. Yeah. It's the animal which is the real thing. Good. Okay. I want you to continue to, to think about how your assessment evolves by sharing with people and asking for feedback and reflecting on it. Well, we have been doing it for years. Next slide, please. Okay. This is something that if we would have had time, I wanted you to do an art activity. And I do this in my classes where I have people take a piece of paper and actually draw out an image that represents what assessment is for them. But we're out of time, mm. but it's always a lot of fun. So I'm gonna think about, maybe I'll bring this back this afternoon, but right now I want, I want you to be able to get out of here because I have two other slides that I wanna show. So next next slide, please, sir. Oh, I need, that's what I could use that. I'll get the Dean to hit the chirper and then, okay, next slide, <laughs> there. So let's come back. We're just gonna finish off a bit about philosophy today. So yesterday we talked a lot about philosophy. Uh, is it possible to have an assessment philosophy? Like there was a lot of passion today. There was a lot of discussion so far about assessment and what you believe. There was not always agreement. Can you have assessment be a part of your teaching philosophy? And you repeat. So when you are being able to, or when you share with people, this is what I believe about teaching. Mm -hmm. Can you also say, this is what I believe about assessment? Could you write that down? Could you share it? Like, is that something that you think based on what we've done today, you have enough of, a, of an idea? What, what might you say? Does anybody have an example of what you might say about philosophy of assessment? Probably regarding the assessment, it's already the framework is there. 
you have to do the assessment according to that framework. Additionally, within that framework, you can alter, you can add something or you can, but otherwise the system is not so flexible. So your philosophy would have a theme of acceptance. Probably, so the idea that you need to work within we can't uh, go you know, the problem is probably like it's everywhere in india the yeah. system need like it's, it's a huge country so changing the system i think may not work because like uh, everyone has to register with the, the veterinary council of yeah, india document. veterinary council mm -hmm. and ultimately they will see that sources how they are being assessed mm -hmm. and what criteria they have followed if there are uniform criteria then they will register the otherwise even your college can be deregistered as only thing you can do is then in addition to that document yeah. you can keep on doing something extra something extra that's the only thing and you we do extra we go out of that uh, after covering that syllabus we go out of that syllabus and do something extra so that the students get something because that syllabus says it is minimum standard yes. you can increase the standard but even assessment. Yeah, about the same, assessment. same thing. Assessment. Same yes. thing about the yeah. learning or assessment. Yes. And this is what we are doing. It is extra to that. Yeah. <laughs> what we are doing in a workshop. Yeah. Yeah. This is extra to extra. That. Yes. Because generally everybody. Just an example. Yeah. I would say everybody is genuinely yes. interested in what you are saying. Yeah. Because in assessment also there is a framework here. If you are simply to talk about a question paper, it is defined. There will be so so many yeah, multiple choice questions. Multiple, yeah. They will carry this fill in the blanks. Yeah. This sort and of number is also is fixed, yeah. which is very so stupid. I would say alter that uh, composition. Yeah. So that, but that's more of the evaluation part. Yes, that is evaluation, not the assessment. Yeah. So, so I think it. I understand how frustrating that is, but I but what I'm also hearing from this group is your willingness to engage in other ways of assessing your students so that when it comes time to those get to those rotten exams that you have no control over, that they're prepared. But that should be practically yeah. feasible. That is yeah. feasible. The that discussion what has happened here, that is feasible in a small group, not in a larger group. Yeah. But maybe that's what you do. Maybe maybe part of your philosophy is to engage colleagues in your immediate teaching area to ensure that students are aware of what's going on. Even though they're headed towards the same finish line, they are going to have a different path as they get there. It's, it's not easy. Like when we were talking about teacher identity, it was easier to put that into our philosophy because we reflect on who we are as people. But that notion of reflecting on you know, what we really value is a in a flawed assessment and evaluation system is more difficult. So I understand where we're kind of grappling with some of those things here, but it, but it does contribute to your understanding and your ability to to communicate with students. And you may say on the first day of class, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> I don't get to set the final exam in this class, but I am going to work with you to ensure you have multiple opportunities to be successful, because that's what I believe as, as an educator. I would suggest you take one course here in our institute and then you will come to know everything. Oh, <laughs> okay, which one? Uh, pharmacology. Well, okay, exactly. <laughs> he was going to say that, right? <laughs> um, next slide. We talked a bit about this. So I just want you to start thinking about assessment and how it might fit into your philosophy. Going back to that idea of creating a document or evidence to show your growth. And maybe you can say that I am still working on it. And that in itself is, uh, is demonstrating your awareness and how you're getting through it. And then again, do you put something about your assessment philosophy into your syllabus? Do you have a, a section in there that says, oh, this is what I believe assessment should do. It should give a student every opportunity to grow and learn. And that's how I, you know, however you frame it, I think is something that you can choose to share with students and, and then they understand. Next slide, please, sir. Uh, again, as a review, we talked about the three main types of assessment today. So hopefully you have a better sense of assessment for learning, assessment as learning, and assessment of learning. We've talked a bit about formative and summative, the idea of giving people ongoing feedback so that they are able to learn and grow as, as a student talked about validity and reliability. So are you using 
assessment methods that are actually effective and, and that you can feel confident and comfortable with giving to your students. I think the other thing that I've that I've seen today is that willingness to engage the viewpoint of students. Whether you agree with it or not, it is helpful for you to understand who you're working with and, and not creating that assessment in isolation. So it is grounded in the experience of your students. Uh, last slide. So that's where we started today, <coughs> this morning. <coughs> Hopefully you feel better about that. The authentic assessment is this afternoon, so we didn't get to that yet, but those ideas of, of validity, reliability, the different kinds, and then how, how do you articulate that to people that you work with? All good? 110, that's not bad. For me, that's a win. That's almost on time. So 2.30 this afternoon, we will continue our wild ride through evaluation. Thank you all for your engagement, uh, for your willingness to share. Again, I'm